Hello, welcome back Woo. to CSL. We are still on our Division 2 spotlight. Today we have mm. Simon Fraser and Washington going at it. I know Washington has a Div 1 team, so this must be their second team. Or, yeah, University of Washington definitely has a Tier 1 team. I've, we've you cast know, it before. They may be Division 2 goalie, but they're Division 1 in our hearts. <laughs> For sure. I mean, these guys are very equally matched this time. Uh, they're both, they were both 5-2 in the fall. Uh, Simon mm -hmm. Fraser getting off to a very strong start, 2-0. Uh, Washington had one bye, so they're right now 0-1. and one, So trying to, you know, get back at Simon Fraser, even at the score a little bit. Yeah, it's I, I, they are pretty even matched. I'm excited to see uh, how, the, how they fare. I think Washington actually went undefeated in the, uh, in the fall, Golgi. I think you might be looking at the Division 1 team. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah Division 2. They went 7-0, and 14-0. and They haven't seen the defeat screen. Damn. They don't know what it's like. They defend their ancient. I mean, we they need to match the them with game. Calgary, right? Calgary is also undefeated, aren't they? Speaking of unstoppable defeat <laughs> teams, don't get me started on my hometown, yeah. Calgary. Yeah, it could be like and, the West Coast showdown. I mean, it's not exactly coast on Calgary, but, you know, close enough. Yeah, not too much water out here. In the <laughs> uh, back in the fall, too, we have the Simon Fraser University. They went 5-2, and 11-4. and four. Not quite undefeated. No. But they know about winning, and they have quite the taste for it. Yeah, solid, solid score for sure. Yeah, let's see if they can finally bring Washington to their knees, and they have not tasted defeat. Is it going to be today that Simon Fraser is going to do that? I think... I think I think they might do it. I'm yeah. looking at their so since the break, they they haven't lost a game. They've gone four and one. They've only lost one game wow. across both series so far. So they did some practicing over wow. the break. Yeah. They 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 came back with a vengeance. They're currently tied for first place in their conference. Except the uh, other team they're tied with is actually four and zero, favoring yeah. them. But I'm ready for this. How is yeah. uh, let me check how Simon or rather oh boy. Never mind, that was the right one. Whew, I thought I misspoke. Uh, Washington State is just 1-0. and Just 1-0. and And they are 2-0 and in the series. So, flawless record so far. Mm -hmm. Even taking, even if they don't take the entire series, taking a game off Washington is already a victory. <laughs> ruining their score immediately. Yeah. Putting them in their place. All right, so looks like uh, the players are all in the lobby. We're going to get the game going up in just about half a minute here. Yes, let's going... do this. I'm ready. Yeah, go to the wait screen for just a bit, and we'll see you guys very soon. Peace. Dire team ban. And welcome back to the draft. We have That's right great. now Simon Fraser, I believe, on the dire side, and Washington correct. over on the radiant. And we're going into the first phase. What do you think? Is there going to be a big difference between Division Two and Division One, or do you think it's going to be pretty much the same? Uh, I mean, from some of the games we've seen so far, I would say. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting a little bit of a difference because it seems like Division 2's skill gap can be a lot wider. Yeah, um, uh, uh, yeah. between the teams, it's, it's, it's usually not an even match. Yeah, yeah. Division 1, they tend to be all very quite talented teams. But uh, when it comes to Div 2, sometimes you got like really, really, really insanely talented teams. Like you said, like Calgary, who probably should be in Div 1, mm -hmm. in oh, all yeah. honesty. And you got Washington here, who was undefeated, who probably have as much of a, you know, say to be in Div 1. Maybe they're not in Div 1 because there is the other Washington team that's already in Div 1. That's, oh. that, that school is just full of talent then, wouldn't it be? Dang, it would. But Simon Fraser has something to prove and they get the the first opportunity to ruin a perfect record yeah i mean that's always sweet when you get to do that you get some breaking rights and then you also feel very confident going into the playoffs knowing that i mean we defeated the best i mean then wouldn't that make you the best even if you had like worst quarter before <laughs> but you, you know can you can argue it um I mean i'm excited i think these teams are, are gonna be this is gonna be a great game uh off to the bands 
Clockwork and Omni Knight and Tusk all make are common. Uh, seeing AA actually banned out isn't too common, but seeing A picked up early is common, so it's not the, the most wild thing I've ever seen. Uh, I would like to point out, though, just because uh, their division number isn't number one mm -hmm. doesn't mean these players aren't talented. They are working together and playing in a competitive Dota League. You know they're taking it seriously. Oh, for uh, sure. Yeah. I think uh, I think one of the as a player and as a spectator, no one should underestimate any of these players here. So interesting ban from Simon Fraser. They uh, banned the Dazzle in response to the AA ban. I'm assuming. I guess they feel like maybe Washington is trying to go for a cheeky Huskar draft or something with the AA ban. One of definitely the hardest counters. Probably not an Alchemist draft because I'm, I don't think I've seen that hero in such a long time. <laughs> it's been a while. I definitely agree. That's a very reactive ban. Looking for it. and then next another very common first pick might give away. Like, I don't know an OD pick, but that's not that's usually a last pick anyways. And League of Ancients, Simon Fraser starting us off. First pick, first phase, Division 2. What's it going to be? Is he going to reserve time on the first pick? Yeah, they're thinking. We're going oh, to no. reserve time. There it is. <laughs> Super fast. Ooh. All right. So this is some aggressive dual offlane. Man, Cobble is such a scary hero in my eyes. I mean, there, there, there are some players out there who are just so good on that yep, hero. I raise my hand to that. Did you know... Behind Earth Spirit, Caudal is my most played hero. Wow. Second most played. Do you, How do you play him? Do you play him uh, the now good old you go liquid dual style? Off lane. Dual uh, offlane. Uh, yeah, it's because he, he just blasts. Oh, there we go. There's a strong laner return, although I got a favor Caudal, but I am completely biased towards that hero. Yeah. I don't like Lich, and the other one is my second most played hero in Dota. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, yeah, right now, the du aggressive dual offlane, all Caudal does is sit in the trees and blast the enemy carry when they try and last hit and just ruins right. their game. That's, I think, uh, the. The, he's the, that's the position he's most powerful in at the moment. And also, it gives them some place to soak up XP without hurting the safe laner, obviously. Pick up some farm for himself as well. Mm -hmm. And one thing, too, is he combos quite well with a lot of heroes. Unfortunately, Clockwork was banned, but that's my favorite, or one of my favorite heroes to duel offlane Coddle with. Clockwork Coddle is very deadly. Right, and then that also gives Clockwork, who is usually a roamer, a lane for himself to farm as well. And Clockwork with some early farm can be very scary indeed. Mm -hmm. Although, uh, in when you do the Caudal dual lane, Caudal does end up taking quite a few CS because he's right. constantly blasting the creep wave. But it does get split between them. But also a high potential for kill. And there's the Brewmaster, seen very often. This is what I'm talking about, though. I think Brewmaster is quite the difficult hero to play, especially uh, you... You can't really just pick him up because you want to have your hotkeys set up on the hero already going into the game. Yep. I don't think he's really... Uh, this hero fits. Let's pick him. You definitely have to have a player. This is our Division 2 Panda. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to say this is... We're watching a Division 2 match and someone picked Panda and I'm excited. And I'm just going to leave it at that and say nothing more. I mean, it, they are the undefeated team, so... You never oh, know. Yeah. I mean, when I was watching Calgary, uh, you were casting that game a couple of days ago. Uh, they were p playing pretty, like you know, Division One ish. Uh, they had some, oh, yeah. uh, like, uh, what's the rank called? The, uh, the top Divine, Divine Dead, like the two or three Divine players on that team. It's like basically a Tier One <laughs> team. Honestly. Yeah, many uh, Tier One teams have similar ranks, actually. Yeah. Oh, so, disruptor. Yeah, Lack strong of, lanes. Oh. Very strong lanes, lack of lockdown, and uh, almost no damage. Are from a level one structure has a very high damage with yep. his thunder strike, but you can't really count on Caudal's damage because Illuminate's easy to dodge. And Disruptor is damage kind of peaks at level one and then comes back at level six. But levels two through, we'll say three through five, you know, thunder strike isn't that scary, and he's not really that scary of a hero. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he Disruptor is definitely one of those heroes that really kind of depends on levels at least in the early game because he's kind of useless without all of his spells online as you said you know uh thunder strike itself is good but you don't want to level that first because the damage really falls off on that one and you kind of use it just for vision um glimpse is effective but it gets so much more effective with higher levels and also of course it, it gets even damage. better yeah it does zero damage and of course you know uh the static field uh, also does zero damage and also kind of useless without being able to be set up with another stun or of course having the level in a glimpse itself. Exactly, but kinetic field into Caudal Illuminate, the perfect combo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, uh, can you push enemies out of the static um, field with blinding light? 
I feel like you keep them in there. Cannot. Yeah, I'm not I, really you sure. can't force out of uh, static uh, fields. So I'm assuming it works the same way. Exactly. That's what I'm assuming. One thing to be careful, though, uh, speaking uh, from speaking from experience, Coddle sometimes doesn't combo well with heroes that uh, want the enemy team to group up because mm. when a Coddle, not naming any names like myself, <laughs> sees a large enemy or a large group of enemies, it's really tempting to just hit like a four or five man blinding light because yeah. that's humongous. But often when playing with heroes like an Axe or a Disruptor who want the enemy team to group up, <laughs> they will get cast their spells right where everyone was just pushed away from. Yeah, we've seen so enough fails of the week. We've seen enough <laughs> yeah. fails of the week where that happens every single time and it is funny <laughs> every single time as well. I kind of wish. Not... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I kind of wish I'm a Fraser is almost going for like a mounted draft. They got two already. Ooh, and it's hard to see. Very, very chivalrous. <laughs> see, but like a Luna? No, it's oh, already no. over. Dream's dead. Oh, Phantom Lance, I'm over it. So, uh, <laughs> oh, PL picks... Coddle, this is classic. Someone picks. Oh yeah, PL Coddle from way back in the day. If any yeah. of you don't know, that was one of the best lanes. Was it like TI three? You just fan. What's it? Phantom Lance. What's his Q? I don't know what his Q. Is. Spirit Lance. Spirit Lance, and then caught all the speeds of mana, and that's yeah. the whole lane. Really fun to play against. Give it a try. <laughs> Ooh, oh, a shaker, shaker in response. Counters PL. Just a great hero. I love that hero. Also can jump on the keeper as well. It fills in a lot of Lich's weaknesses. Lich is extremely strong in lane. And all right. I don't have much more to say about him. <laughs> but, uh, Very true. Her spirit does what Lich cannot. Um. I like to say though, when you pick Disruptor, the enemy team usually just picks Life Stealer or Juggernaut, and that's pretty much how that goes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just built-in BKB seems pretty good against Glimpse. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Life Stealer, I, like Disruptor. Playing Disruptor against Life Stealer is awful. You really just can't do too much to him. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you can walk out of the static field. Only way to get him is like a, if you can get a sneaky silence on him before anything happens. But that's pretty mm -hmm. rough. So. You, um, Washington's team fight seems is really good. They have Lich, which is kind of weird because usually uh, his alt will bounce out. And there's Titan. Okay, so there's some there's some team fight coming up for Simon Fraser. Mm -hmm. Both teams are really strong, but I'm concerned because PL's not really a frontliner. Tide is a frontliner in the sense he's going to initiate the fight or counter initiate the fight, but he does not really too scary after that. Uh, Coddle and Disruptor are definitely not frontliners, so I'm worried that PL is going to have a hard time staying alive if he's the only one really going in. Yeah. Also, Disruptor wants to be on teams that chase the enemy down, and True that. Uh, I mean, PL chases people down, but no one else does just yet. And, I mean, Juggernaut pick is uh, starting to look better and better as well. Of course, his spin, very good against Tidehunter. If you have the reaction speed or have the vision uh, acquired beforehand, it's very easy to react to that blink in with the spin. Of course, um, Brewmaster, someone that is going to be hard to take down within just a Ravage. Of course, they can just drop the uh, Disruptor ulti on top of that to keep him from ultiing, but he's a very tanky hero. And keep in mind that... Remaster was buffed, uh, I think it was the 7.0 patch, where his Storm Panda's Purge does an insane amount of damage to illusions. Like, oh, I think it's does like it? a thousand damage or something. Like something ridiculous, like a humongous amount. Oh, it's like the old Purge, like in the, on the Dark yeah, Fusel Blade? Yeah, Warcraft 3 Purge. Yeah, you could do a thousand damage to summoned units. I mean, there was yeah. a time where Purge instantly killed summoned units as well, even in yeah, Dota rip 2. Rip Warlock. Yeah, Rip Warlock. It just <laughs> filled that Fusel Blade. He's a, <laughs> his half of his hero is basically gone. He's an upheaval yep. bot. And I guess... Uh, the the chain pain whatever that's called is a pretty good spell oh yeah uh okay so we have oh here we go last pick Huck. Huck, all right more team fight yeah i like uh i'm having a hard time seeing how simon fraser fights they really need to have do well in the lanes yep. and kind of, i feel like they need to snowball if it gets to an even match or a drawn out match none of those heroes except for Tidehunter want to go in. And again, Tidehunter only can go in for so long. Once his, once everyone's, you know, uh, taken out a Ravage, he can anchor smash and maybe soak some damage, but he's not putting too much damage out. You can kind of just ignore him. Yeah, very true. And of course, uh, with Tidehunter on the team, they really depend on the ultimate to win and lose fights. And it kind of puts them on kind of a cycle. Like, we look for team fights when the ult is up, and then they're very vulnerable for the next, like, two minutes while the ult cools down. Also, 
I'd like to note that Dream Coil with Blinding Light, great oh, combo. Yeah, you're right. That's that's insane. Especially the fact that Dream Coil now does no damage on cast and does insane amount of damage now if you break the coil. Uh, even makes the combos better now. Mm. I think I think that's a really nice change for Dream Coil. I agree. Um, it makes sense when it comes to. I mean, it makes it more skillful. It makes it like you play like it's supposed to be made to be played. It's yeah. Nice. Definitely. So, if there's one thing I've ever learned, and I might have to eat my words here, because I'm going to say this before the last pick. If there's one thing I've learned from Collegiate Dota, just kidding, here comes the pick. Ember Spirit, hello. Alright, yeah, Final Magic Officer's going to be feeling he's more got, pain. Yeah, he's very good against AoE. He can go Battle Fury, or he can go Lightning from Maelstrom. Yep. What do you think he's going to go? Uh, or do you think he's going to go Magic Damage? He could even go Radiance, yeah. I mean... It's been popular for Juggernaut to pick up Battle Furies nowadays. I'm I'm wondering if two Battle Furies on a team is too much. Uh, and I think a lot of people, like in this current patch, many people are getting Battle Furies. That's very true, yeah. I, I've seen someone pick Battle Fury in Phalanx, so I can't remember who it was. Was it E? Um, I mean, E always known for weird-ass builds, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, well, I mean, Terror Blade Battle Fury is the standard now. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah. Oh, that it's is nuts. Weird. Uh, I was going to mention, if there's one thing I know about Collegiate Dota, it's it's often that the the team that's easier to execute will win, especially as games are drawn on. And I feel strongly that Simon Fraser, uh, their team is much harder to execute. Yes, the team with the Panda, I believe, is actually easier to execute. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, 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 their, their game plan is at least very straightforward. <laughs> that was a weird glitch on my screen i didn't get like kind of the uh intro like fighting game like intro screen oh weird yeah it just was like a, uh i loaded into the game with the entire map in the uh, fog of war but uh thankfully i loaded into the game fine so <laughs> let's get these teams introduced and on the radiant i believe that is the washington team we have jivy playing the ember spirit middle we have memnetic on the juggernaut Playing the Panda is Karthus, and over on the Lich is Tyrant. I believe he plays in the other Washington team. He's filling for this, I'm assuming, then. And we have Ooh. 403 on the Earthshaker. Oh, area code for Calgary, Earthshaker. <laughs> on the Dyer, on Simon Fraser. With the electric attitude, we have Des Ward on Disruptor. He's so hungry, he could eat Washington. Hyper Rays on Tidehunter. We have Belial Emni on Puck. Arterux, not Artor, on Phantom Lancer, playing the carry you're sick of seeing in every one of your pubs. And my man, Caudal, being played by M. Sutrija. Perfect pronunciation of his name. He messaged me before to tell me. <laughs> Did he? No. <laughs> <laughs> but not quite. Yeah, so some some weird names in this game, and a lot of them with a very uh, creative typography, with <laughs> weird capitalizations and brackets and such. These are the these are the this is just perfect gamer tag etiquette. You just gotta put make it weird. So no conflict at the level one ruins. Yeah. Weird. I'm not a fan of that. I always love the fights for the level one ruins. I always, every pub I play, I push for them. <laughs> Even if I'm like they have good level one, but let's still go. Also, top oh. lane, we have a lot some, of damage. Yeah, a lot it's of damage. You're talking blood. about Disruptor's uh, use of that uh, Q to be able to do a lot of damage in level 1. There's a lot of mana drain with the mana leak, but of course, yeah. level 1 mana leak, not amazing at draining all it's, the mana. Yeah, level 1 mana leak is, I think it's pretty bad now because, as you saw, Panda just ran the whole time. Yeah. It didn't stun him. So it kind of just does nothing. And now we have three players top, both warding in front of each other. Disruptor brought a sentry, so hopefully he'll clean that up shortly. Oh, yep, there it there is. There it is. He eats it with the tango. Ooh, look at Earthshaker. Boots triple clarity. He's not here to take damage. <laughs> and then, uh... Yeah, that means he probably won't be as efficient on this uh, tri lane, not being able to trade uh, auto attacks and such. But Karthus, mm -hmm. with that drunken brawler, is dodging a lot of attacks. It might be worth it for Earthshaker to go somewhere else, because Lich skilled sacrifice, so until level 2... The uh, Washington tri lane actually really can't do much. Yeah. Earthshaker just watches. There's no way they're going to get a kill. Lich is just a range creep at the moment. And we will, of course, that means that Tidehunter is getting a solo lane against the Juggernaut himself, and that's a lane that Tidehunter can do quite well in. Yeah, Tidehunter's not too scared against melees. Caudal going around to take the bounty. I like it. 
Yeah, Harassed is 4 3 out. Mana Leak Chakra Magic build. All right, so I think we're going to see some Spirit Lance. Makes sense, actually. Between Spirit Lance and Thunderstrike, those are two insane nukes in lane. Yeah. You know what? He doesn't. Coddle doesn't need to worry about doing the damage. And he's going to do a pull right here as well. And, and this is the problem with an aggressive tri lane. You really need to. You have to. You got to. You can't let them huh? pull it. In the aggro. middle, there is a chase coming up. But TMM, he, he's the one that kind of overextends there. He thought he could go on Emmy, but uh, he had already taken too much damage. And the flame guard not being able to protect him from those right clicks. Mm -hmm. Magic damage, not physical damage. I think. Uh, it's often that people forget how much damage Puck does early on. Oh yeah, he's right. It's so are. common with in Drow lineup it's because he already has such high base damage. Yeah, and starting with a null thousand as usually as well, augmenting that damage even higher. All right, so we have level two in the tri lane. I wouldn't be surprised to see a fight. Um, and because unless there's some kills gotten and unless those camps are blocked, this tri lane strongly favors Simon Fraser. I would say. Because yeah. they're going to have access to more experience. I guess against the Lich, it kind of does even out. What a weird situation. I feel like this Earthshaker hasn't done anything in this lane. No, and he has no regents. He's playing so scared. Yeah, he, he doesn't even trade right clicks either, which he should be doing. But even with, uh, with three clarity oh, start, you should be roaming. Oh, yeah. Ember Spirit actually just missed his chains. <sighs> oh, that's unfortunate. That would have been a kill then if he landed the chains. Only 80 health left on the puck. But he finds a uh, rune on the bottom. Very lucky for him. So he's going to be able to bottle back up. Down in the bottom lane, Juggernaut's just getting bullied out. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just hitting him with his anchor. Yeah, that's going to get Lich to respond to TPN for his uh, carry there. But yeah, there's no way Juggernaut can just farm in this lane. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe Simon Fraser are too worried about their top lane. They know the camps are not blocked. Caudal's going to get his second round of double bounty runes. And uh, Phantom Lancer's out farming Panda. It looks like Urshaker for finally stepped up into range and took a bit of damage. Simon Fraser noticing he brought no regen. Alright. Puck's about to pick up an invis rune. Maybe we're going to see something happen. Yeah. Still not level 6 yet. But of course he does have a lot of damage still. And Lich rotated bottom to help out Juggernaut. Yeah. That makes oh, a lot still of taking so much damage. One more last step will actually do it for the tide. He actually is going for the dive. But oh, can he get the healing word? Not many oh. microts. So that's Easy. 75 gold for Hyper Rays. Magnetic has the salve dose. Who's healing up but doesn't have the mana. Or actually the level stormy slash either. Hyper Rays is going to take his time. Take the bounty rune. He's going to get out. In the this mid lane again. This game is looking very GV good for Simon going on Fraser. enemy, But he has the orb to get out. No problem. Uh, it looks like they're winning every lane. Yeah, no, for sure. Simon Fraser. You said, I mean, with this lineup, they need to win the lanes hard, so, and they're doing it. That's sword going for the body block on Karthus, but a great Fisher is going to be able to stop them for a little bit. Arthur is stuck in the spirit run. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. That's hilarious. Yeah, um, I... Pathing can't get around that, apparently, so, <laughs> oh, Val, please fix. Love it. Uh, yeah. And then part of the tide hunters is from yeah. Ever since the um, the pathing changes the creeps and fissures, uh, heroes will react like that as well sometimes. Yeah. Tide hunter doesn't care at, about no. anything. He's level six. He's just making space. Oh. He's playing single flare. Smashes juggernaut with his anchor. Yeah, Mimnetic is taking so much damage from those anchor slash smashes, and he can't last it once he get hit by that. Of course. Two points in in top again. Uh, Malik. Drain. Oh, but a or, yeah. great fissure yet again by four oh three. Arthur is going to walk himself out. He's going to be fine. Mana boots are picked up on Tide, so he can definitely cast all of his spells. It's just the question is, is it going to be enough damage and our TP rotation is going to occur from oh, Washington? Should they want to go in? The oh. Netic is going to spin on him. Of course, the Kraken Shell doesn't help him with that. That might be enough damage. Yeah, he goes down. Getting a little bit too cocky in that lane. I, I agree. I think he did get too cocky. Oh, top we lane. Top. Oh, yeah, the is. Fisher. Uh, he is getting too greedy for his bounty runes. He got his third uh, bounty, but uh, this time he pays a price. He got a little bit too predictable, I guess. So, Puck is just... Nah, he's not dominating. He's beating the Ember Spirit. Mate. Yep. And and he has one kill and, of course, six more last hits over him. Ember Spirit just accidentally TP'd to his own tower. Oh, no. <laughs> and he left the Remnant. Oh, that's and awkward. Add, add insult to injury. After TPing to his own tower, he used the Remnant beside where he teleported. Oh, Top lane, there's a fight going on. Panda's getting yeah. chased down. The vision is there from the... Uh, the Q from the Disruptor, and he's getting chased on, but he has a TP, can he dodge enough? Yeah, he is going glimpse, to be glimpse. tanky enough. He's not going to be able to get that. Uh, did he not have Glimpse? He had the level in Glimpse. Did you see? He did, but I guess, they, I guess they lost vision. 
Ah, right. With with two great vision spells, Spirit Lance and Thunderstrike, and Desrol was just shy of being able to get a kinetic field glimpse. Yeah, the Fisher was there to be able to block them off from us. So great play by 403. Nice. He got to shaky three. start, but his Fisher has been on point so far. A shaky start. Nice, Golgi. Well said. <laughs> it was actually unintentional. <laughs> Yeah, play, playing it humble, okay. <laughs> so we have the uh, haste room finally it. popped on Bilal. He's going He's to be spells. moving over to the bot lane. He has a Dream Coil ready, but this is a Juggernaut who can spin out of it. Jug might get Omni Slash as this fight starts, and he has seven yeah. wand charges. He's yeah. really close to six. One more creep kill, and Puck just leaves. Ugh, the boy. healing ward is going to get him full as well. Panda chase down. Great Panda. Arthur is starting to do damage. Of course, Panda is very tanky. He stands his ground and fights for a little bit. Another Spirit Lance coming out. He's got to be careful. One more Spirit Lance will do it, but he doesn't have the mana for it. And Chakra, mana, Chakra Magic is still on cooldown. So again, oh. Karthus lives. Go back to the lanes, but of the four top four uh, last hits, three of them are for Simon Fraser. Puck, Tidehunter, and PL. PL is just trailing behind Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit is 32 CS. PL is 29. Peel does have 19 denies. Oh, 19 is pretty nice. I mean, so, actually, denies from Simon Fraser's side just in general all look very good. Simon 13, Fraser's 17, looking 19. extremely strong going into this game. Yeah, definitely showing their power in laning phase at the very least. Uh, Cardo's build is scaring me a little bit. I want to see what he does with it. Ooh, he can't farm at all. Usually you want to see Coddle kind of into the jungle or something later, all right? This Coddle can't do anything by himself at the at this moment with this build. This is strictly to play around his team. So it's it's great that his team is doing well and he's going to be able to support them. But if his if, uh, if the game starts evening out or any of his cores fall behind, uh, Coddle will, will just be just as weak. Yeah, and that means his Egg Scepter is going to be very far away. Actually, mid lane again, Bilal taking down Jivy. Looks like, what did he use? He didn't even. He used his ulti to keep him around, doing 448 damage. Ember Spirit's having an awful time mid lane. Yeah. And Puck's just going to heal up. Puck is 1,000 gold away from Blink Dagger. <laughs> the bottom lane, Tidehunter is just still pulling everyone out. Panda might die top. Uh -oh. oh, so another great Fisher from 403, but Arthas is going to go for the dive here. He has a Lance this time to finish him off, but Jivy is looking for some kills. Mali goes on 403, he's going to stand his ground just under the tower, while Sturgeon is taking a huge amount of damage from the Ember Spirit. Can you get out? The static field is there, and that's going to be able to block oh the gosh. Ember Spirit off. But a great oh. Fisher yet again from 403 picks up that kill, and they want more. Here comes a, uh, the last, I believe, Remnant coming out, but the nice uh, glimpse back is there for that's where to save him for the time being. 403 is going get out. Arthas is going to throw the last Spirit Lance, but he is, that's the last one. Hyper Rays barely gets out, jukes it through the trees, and TPs into the base. In the meantime, Tidehunter had a Ravage to save his life. He got away with oh, less yes. than 10%. Oh, yeah. Invisrune on Puck, and he's heading top lane. He has a Dream Coil back up. Oh, this is looking good, but 403 has been throwing great fishers. Yeah, he has. He so might he actually just look no for way. 403 here. He's level 9. He's 5 levels over this Earthshaker. And Sturge also coming Coddle's in as coming. well. Coddle offers nothing, though. The best thing Coddle can do is give Puck cooldown reduction yeah. right now, I think. Uh, are they going to commit? Bilal actually being very patient here. They want to get both, it seems like. Or at least the, the bigger fish, which is a panda, obviously. Bilal is in this think... last quarter left. Oh, they're actually not going to commit? I don't know. I think they should definitely go for it. I feel like they should. They have four heroes here. So we're going bottom again. Tidehunter. I'm always. I see the minimap and I see Tidehunter. Oh, Mimic actually hits. Get hit by the Anchor Smash as well. It takes so much damage. He has mana for Healing Ward. Yeah, he's going to be able to use it. This time hiding Panda. in the trees. Panda took some damage top lane in the meantime. Yep. Just getting speared endlessly from Phantom Lancer. Mm hmm. Constant chakra magic spear, 17 wand charges on Coddle. Looking good. And now the ward is getting pinged out that doesn't exist. I want to check that. Panda's taking so much harass. There's the mana leak and another great yeah. fisher. But he is getting closer to that ever coveted level 6, which will keep himself even safer with that split. PL is now overtaken Ember Spirit on CS. Oh, mid lane, we have another fight. That looks like the Dream Call was committed, but Zhivi does not break it off. In the top lane, there is a dive over to Karthus. Karthus gets finally taken down. Finally! That was, I believe, the first de uh, death from actually the second death. There has been a lot of pressure on him. 
4-3 gets pinged out. Here comes another Spear Arthas. Nope, this is too much for him to actually try to dive. Simon Fraser is very dominant in the lane currently. And I think Tidehunter got a little too cocky, but he's still having, uh, causing Washington to commit two heroes bottom, and he's slowing down Juggernaut's farm. Um, yeah. Diffusal Blade, there already has one and a half Blades of Alacrity, halfway to a second. For Phantom Lancer, that's a crazy item. He's a huge power spike when he gets it. Yeah, um, even synergizing with the Mana Leak as well. Again, Karthus getting chased down. He still doesn't have his ulti the yet. Oh, the glimpse gets used. That doesn't drain his mana, interestingly. And oh, he dodges the uh, dodge. the smash with the Tidehunt. And then he gets taken down as well. Can't TP out in time. Meanwhile, Hyper, uh, Hyper Raze gets taken down by the Omni Slash, I believe, of Manetic. Yep, he got Omni Slash right at the end as he got into tower range. And <laughs> Puck just harassing Ember Spirit. Sitting in lane. It's his lane. 65 CS. Juggernaut actually second in CS now. It looks like... Tide's blunder has caused Juggernaut to catch back up. Juggernaut and Ember Spirit actually second and third almost exactly. Oh, actually, PL too. Everyone's very close on CS. The top yeah. five at least. And then the bottom five, including Panda. Poor guy. Yeah. Obviously, Ember Spirit is slightly struggling against them, Puck. Well, a, a little bit over 1,000k difference, but still not that far behind, as you said. He can definitely catch up. We have three versus oh, three top. Fisher Echo missed slam. on the top. Arthas, he's on the wrong side of the Fisher. Nope, Arthrox, can he walk? No, he can't walk. He's fine, though. Panda almost has ult. Earth Spirit and Lich do have ult. Disruptor has Static Storm as well, though. Which is huge. And Glimpse to stop any TP rotations then. Except for from a Juggernaut. Yeah. Oh, his head level 6 as well. Yeah, these supports doing very well in levels. Finally, Keeper puts the f first level into his Illuminate. There we go. Tidehunter's one-on-one -on -one versus Juggernaut now. It looks like Juggernaut's a bit more scared when Lich is in here. Yeah, and of course, especially with that Omni Slash being down, much less mm -hmm. uh, deadly on that Juggernaut, at least early on in the game. Tidehunter's just pulling him out with Anchor Smash. Lich shows up mid and looks like he's going to head back bottom. So it looks like it is going with the Ember Spirit that's going for the Battle of Fury. Meanwhile, the Juggernaut builds a first item, Diffusal Blade. I think if Washington didn't get a kill on PL, if they overcommit for this tower, I think Washington is in a great spot and has recovered from the lanes. PL really just seems pretty scary. He seems very scary right now. Uh, Puck has his Blink Dagger, which I think Ooh. he just revealed for for almost nothing. Yeah, 15 minutes, um, Blink Dagger. But Puck is ready to go. Puck's ready to fight or make space. Puck's ready to do what Puck wants to do this game. He's played very cautiously uh, so far. I think they want to slow down the Ember Spirit is why, they're, is why Puck is staying mid so right. much. Ember Spirit about still 1,000 gold away from being able to pick that Battle Fury up. Mm. He does have the Perseverance. No Demon Edge though. And Mana Boots picked up on her Shaker actually. So he's not doing too bad. He's up the blank. He already has almost 800 gold. <laughs> Can spam out those fishers a little bit. Like right now, Coddle would love to be farming the jungle because nothing's really happening in this top anymore. He's actually uh, he is keeping bot hyper raise is very low. Magnetic, can you get it? Oh, the, the anchor smash is enough to do this, uh, delay his damage even with the crit. And just to try oh, now going after Tyrant, he has no mana left. Uh, but the ice armor is going to be able to slow him down enough to be able to stop that chase. Ray finally getting his revenge on that Tide Hunter. Their uh, panda is chasing down. Oh no, Panda wasted his first alt after finally getting it. Yeah. Oh wait, did they get, use it to get Puck? No, Puck just got taken out mid. Ooh, it These looks two, like... What is going on mid lane? These guys yeah. just blow each other up. How did Jivy actually get that kill? Must have been a triple remnant use. That. He's, all his remnants are on cooldown. Looks like there was a great change into a triple remnant He play. just picked up a Battle Fury as well. Yeah, that kill and definitely that kill. Going worth a lot. How much money was oh. that? That was 539 gold. But now, Hyper Rays getting found by Jivy. Here's a Remnant in Amstra. Can he save his offlaner? There is the stun coming out from the Mana Leak. Uh, slow as well for Hyper Rays. He's a very fast fish, but with no health, he doesn't want to commit. Mm -hmm. Just throttles on back. We're gonna go jungle, because jungle creeps don't do damage. And PL has defusal, so PL's ready to go. We're gonna see, I think this is what we're gonna we're gonna make into the mid game here. Everyone, uh, at least on Simon Fraser, is ready. But everyone, I mean PL and Puck are ready to go. Tidehunter has a mech as well. 
Uh, once Ravage is up in just over a minute, I think Simon Fraser is going to group up and take objectives until they're forced to commit Ravage. But in which case, I think it's very likely they're going to win a fight. Um, it's great to see Mech and Blink Dagger picked up because of how many counters there are for PL on Simon Fraser. Yeah. Seeing Strength in Puck and seeing Strength in Tidehunter is really important. Uh, they, Simon Fraser does want to be a team where when PL dies, they have nothing left because PL uh, has a lot, a lot of spells to look out for. Echo Slam, Chain Frost, uh, Hey, Glaive's on the fist, top on 403. He doesn't have the Echo Slam, and the damage is there from our trucks. More than enough with that Divisal Blade. Oh, insane with Diffusal Blade. Yeah, very good timing on all these items for Simon Fraser's team so far. And top lane is likely not going to get defended. Uh, disruptor showing, so no one can TP right in on top of the tower because uh, they'll have to worry about glimpse. Yeah. In the Hyper meantime, Juggernaut. Oh, go right ahead. Hyper is also about 1,400 gold away from his Blink Dagger as well. So, yeah, all these um, cores from Sam Fraser are looking very healthy. Of course, you talked about that Battle of Fury and picked up on Jivy. Has the Juggernaut finished with Ifusal Blade? Yeah, Ifusal Blade on Juggernaut as well. Yeah, very close game so far. Coddle taking up double runes again, just all game. <laughs> oh, regen rune for mid players, we had a little fight over it, nope. Oh yeah, oh, there's Puck a chain and down. triple a remnant as well, and Puck does not use the orb, he used the orb That's way too fast, I mean. Value ward, getting a kill for mid. Yeah. And he's still holding on to a regen, pops it after to heal right up. Complete and turnaround. Now, yeah, the net worth has been flipped between those two mid laners now. This is the first time it feels like Washington has any space this game. Yeah. M Sutra is firing that level 1 remnant away. Can they get the glimpse? There is oh, the there glimpse. We go. But oh, he oh, uses that no. great uh, sleight of fist to dodge that um, glimpse. Very well timed. You know what's upsetting is the structure could have just cast Static Storm early. Yeah, on top of him. And, and he would have he got him. Yeah. Uh, very unfortunate. Very good play, of course, from uh, Jivy to be able to dodge a... Mm -hmm. Glimpse, very hard to spell to dodge at times. Yep, definitely. And bottom tower is going to get pressed. Puck is pushing it. And actually, Diffusal Blade first on Juggernaut. Yep, he is doing quite so, well. I mean, that's for fighting. I guess. Oh, it looks like we're going to see a fight here soon. Four yep. heroes bottom. Of course, it is Disruptor's Juggernaut. Is baiting. Hyper is coming in. Now Tyrant gets glimpsed back, but it's a very short distance. Can he get trapped? No, he will not get trapped. There is a man leak on him as well. Teleport's He's going to stand his in. ground, fire off the Chain Frost. Hyper is taking a lot of damage from it, but the Chain Frost ends. Javi now TPing in. He has a boost of travels on him already. Can he find the Coddle? He, he missed his chains right now, but a great remnant in. But here is Ooh. the four man Ravage, but no damage to follow up. And Hyper Rays is going to sacrifice himself for that. And now I'm just getting chased by the pandas. Meanwhile, there's Omni slash committed by Juggernaut to be able to pick up the support kill on Disruptor. Now the uh, Dream Call has cast, catching three, but there is no more damage to be had. There, oh my god, great um, phase to be able to dodge the Echo Slam, but that's not going to be able to get him out of there. Just an only style on him. And Keeper of Light, the only sole survivor on the Samurai Phase side in that fight. Of course, there was a Final Answer pushing top, but definitely not worth that huge fight loss. About 2k Thank gold change. Thank God for the PL split push because that fight went extremely poorly for Simon Fraser. Disruptor and Ty get caught out. Tide ends up gets getting taken down after such a huge ravage because no one was really in position. And even if they were Disruptor, didn't have Static Storm. Uh, trying to salvage, just, Disruptor went in, tried to, to, to save his friend. And then Juggernaut just spanned through, uh, spun through Kinetic Field and Omni slashed him. And I thought the fight was over, and then Puck goes in after all that no. and dies by himself. One by one by one. Simon Fraser's throwing away an amazing lead they had for themselves after the laning phase. Yeah, I don't know what they were planning to do. With the, I mean, they were trying to win a fight, I, I, I guess, with Tidehunter, Keeper of Light, and Disruptor. But as you said, those three lack a lot of damage. Um, and they needed at least a Puck there. Puck now getting chased down. Chains again from Jivian. He's doing so much damage to his right clicks. Phase out from Puck, but he doesn't have the Blink Dagger still. Oh, there's a Static Storm to be able to maybe silence them long enough. But there's a short... Oh, he actually used a weapon to dodge the Glimpse again. And now the Chains on to Disruptor. And Disruptor needs a few more right clicks to get taken down. Jivian is going to take that as well. Now no more mana. Get stumped by the mana leak. He doesn't have any stick 
Draco and something like that, but do they have the damage to take him down? 403 TPing in, and the Lich TPing in as well. The second Malik is there, 100 health left, the blind is there to push him even farther back. But oh my great! God. Um, uh, Fisher is going to be able to block them off from the chain, and that's going to be able to save the Ember Spirit for now. And the Chain Frost coming out as well, MG Sutra gets taken down, Hyper Rays, he's probably won't be taken down, but what a play coming out from the uh, Washington team there. A second you are top lane, actually the action doesn't land, Karthus wants some balancer, blood, can they find the right one, and they, I don't think he's in the wrong one, Karthus, can he, no, he it's gets it, oh, the illusion is going to be able to take it, but of course the experience goes over to the panda. That's, that's crazy, after all the, after panda's mana was burned, there was no damage left, and he just beat him down, looked yep. him in the face. <laughs> uh, Earthshaker's really bringing it. After the questionable first few minutes where he weren't sure what he was doing, he clearly knows what he's doing. Yeah. These fishers have been amazing. And Ember Spirit proving it is not a fluke, dodging glimpse, doing it two times. Oh, mid in a row. lane again, Jivy. Oh, he is so on the roll right now. Unstoppable lead after a bad start in lane. He has Kettle, uh, Chrysalis already ready as well. Those illusions are not going to be able to stand to this kind of damage. Very cocky going for the, or not cocky, but confident yeah. going for a Crystallis before the Lincoln series is going to pick up third after uh, not including bots. Likely, do you think he's going to turn it into, uh, he's, do you think he's going to upgrade his crit? Or do Looks you think like he has at least a quick uh, buy bar, the Lincoln Sphere. So, of course. I'm but assuming he is going for that safe play. Yeah, after Lincoln's, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, they just want as much damage as possible to clear illusions. Uh, they can, I mean, either do that or go for a second Battle Fury. Or I guess he could go for more defensive items as well. But Jivy might find, oh, actually, Echo uh -oh. Slam onto Phalanx, so he gets destroyed. And a Ravage going to be able to counter it, but now they don't have a lot of damage with the Phalanx being gone. A stun also lands on Bilal, not being able to go in, chasing after that ball. Now the Static Storm gets dropped, but no follow-up on that. Phalanx, most of their farm right now, so they can't do anything. But the Pandas are on a roll. They're going to get a double chain on both of the supports, and 403 blinks in Enchant Totems and stuns both of them, and they will get taken down as well. Hello. He just shook the earth. Yeah, he did. He just shook the earth. Oh, and the silence it. on him. He can't get a little target. But the illusory all misses 403. One more last. It will do it. But Bilal blinks forward. Oh, the no. stun is there. Can he get him? No. The Fisher oh, is going to be able to keep him stunned long enough for oh. Jimmy to pick up that kill with a slide of fist. I want to feel bad for Simon Fraser, but I'm sure they feel bad enough, especially after that poor puck. Oh, they're getting uh, outplayed. Simon Fraser loses PL, Ravage is on cooldown, and so is Dream Coil. Simon Fraser doesn't have a team at that point. Yeah. Uh, that initial uh, Echo Slam was just... A, a, that all That's all they needed to win the next minute of gameplay there. And they just had complete control of the, the map, they did whatever they want. Puck fed, and now they're pushing up to did some damage to a T3. Yeah, as you said, this uh, Keeper of Light build... Um... I feel like he's kind of falling off at this point, having he no He doesn't illuminate. offer anything. Yeah, he, he doesn't offer anything. He can't even anything. push the enemy team away because it illuminates level 1. He can't, uh, he can't clear the creep waves. So, and PL is the sole hope of Simon Fraser, it feels. But, let's see what they do. Hopefully, that last team fight that went sour was a, a learning experience. So Simon Fraser knows not to fight unless they have all their spells. And if they have all their spells, all they have to do is hit them. And it should be pretty easy to roll over Washington, who now has a 10k gold advantage. Indeed, and they're now moving over to their second tier 2 of the game. And it looks like there isn't going to be any defense here from SFU. No way, you got it. You can only fight high ground after just getting massacred like that. Yeah. And of Go course, on, Ravage no. being on cooldown means they can't really take the seconds. fight at full strength either. Ember Spirit is alone, but it's Ember Spirit. He has bots. Yeah. Not doesn't really count as being split from his team. You can always TP in. Of course, safety remnants could be on the map. I don't believe there was a safety remnant there, but he has been pretty much on the ball in dodging that glimpse. So, very confident in his abilities to be able to be stay himself safe. Double damage bottom. The huge that Simon Fraser gets this and doesn't let Washington take it for a push or for a Roshan. Um, Simon Fraser is trying to get as much farm as they can as safely as they can, which is it's it's their only it's really their only play right now. Washington is in control of the game. They the very defensive wards from Simon Fraser just trying to salvage anything, just just trying to sneak around the jungle and hit a few creeps without getting caught by the steamroller that is currently Washington. Yeah. 
And knowing that Simon Fraser is playing very defensive, they feel very confident in going for this Roshan as well. Wards are up everywhere, so they know they're safe, or at least for the time being. Unless there's a smoke play coming out from uh, Simon Fraser. There is two smokes on this word, but I don't think they know this is going on. They spot Coddle in this high ground. This would, be, this would be a great time to take a fight from Simon Fraser. Everyone's grouped up. However... Yeah, Roshan they're, oh, they're smoked down, up. They're, they're they, ready. Yeah, they also scan as well, but this uh, Roshan is taken down already. Are they still going to come in? Go? Looks like they are. The Aegis goes to the Panda. There Ooh. goes the gigantic initiation by the Ravager. Four people get caught, and Grey Storm is starting to follow up. Juggernaut is still caught in it, but now he starts spinning, and Arthur takes no. so much damage. PL gets uh, deleted, and then it spins on the Disruptor to take him down. Now I'm just trying to try big trouble. All oh, the crits are there as well, and the slide of fist, and the last auto attack from Netis will take that. Now everyone's routing right now from the side of SAFU. Hyper Ray's trying to get his blink dagger one second until that, but Karthus has other plans. He's going to be constantly right clicking. He doesn't do a lot of damage. We'll keep him around for a while, but there's there the blink off. He's going to be okay. Brewmaster Aegis. Let's go. Oh, After P. PL died. I was kind of. I looked around with my camera and I was like, okay, what does Simon Fraser have to do? And I just. Moved oh, my camera what? Past. Bilal got a no. solo kill with an Echo Simon, looks like, on to Bilal. Earthshaker is, has Puck's number. He's just out to Rune's Puck's game. Yeah. He's constantly. Oh, it was that actual GG call there? Bilal calls that, or was that a mistake? Um. <laughs> they don't even apologize. Uh, yeah, that's awkward. Uh, <laughs> looks like it wasn't an actual GG call. Okay. okay. Um, there is the doppelganger used by Arthas. He goes in. Jivy taking all the mana away. Ooh. Arthas is on a roll. Brewmaster Ooh. pauses the game. Oh, yeah. Now they're confused. Yeah, you can't call GG like that. Yeah, they thought the game was over. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's a little fishy. Um, Ember Spear might have died for that. They thought the game was over. Um, Good sportsmanship from the Washington side. Karthus getting slowed down. He does have the Aegis. He will be coming back up. Magnetic comes back in, but gets mad leaked, and now he might go down for his troubles. Blink out from Karthus, but Magnetic now is going to spin and try to TP with that one. He's going to get out of there. Chain Frost bouncing oh between the Illusion. Arthas still going in, uh, but he doesn't feel safe with the Earthshaker somewhere around. And 4 3, four, three blinks in. More spears coming out of his way. Malik is there as well. And the Diffusal Blade is going to spill. Stun him with the combination of the Malik as well. And a great turnaround for SFU. They're now trying to look for this Lich. And the Puck finds him. He silences him as well. And this, uh, the Blinding Light is going to push him back. The slow comes from Hyper Rays. And one more right click is going to be able to do it for Bilal. You know. This, when you're playing from behind, you really need something to go right like that. You just need to catch a high-value target off guard. And I guess one way to do that is to call a good game in a competitive match and then blow him up when he walks high ground attacking your building. Yeah. And, you know, they gave Washington gave Simon Fraser an inch after falling for that sneaky play, and they took a mile just cleaning up Lich, Earthshaker, and uh, Ember Spirit. Puck is very happy to get revenge on Earthshaker, I'm sure. Um... But Simon Fraser still suffers from the same problem going forward after that fight. When PL goes down, Simon Fraser is not very s scary at all. I was going to mention before that fight broke out, after the Roche fight, when PL died, I scrolled over at Simon Fraser's team and I oh, saw... Oh, it's actually Static Storm coming out onto Ember Spirit. Arthas is there and a <gasps> Great Ravage also catches uh, the uh, um, the Earthshaker. But Earthshaker Fisher to be able to save again, JV gets out. And an Echo Slam oh. with a huge amount of damage over to Arthas. And a um, Slide of Fisk will be taken down. And Magnetic spins Please on I'm that <laughs> the gigantic Leviathan and be able to take him down. What a turnaround yeah. there. Great fishing yet again from 403. At the anime running, Fire Panda's going in. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the Earth Panda is the one that he spawns in. He actually has a radiance on that panda, doing so well for himself. Doing very well, especially after a. I think awful would be a good way to describe yeah. his laning phase. Having the support Earthshaker get six before the actual offlaner is a little. You could say. It might be called the off lane because that's a little bit off. <laughs> yeah. That? It's definitely not what you're dreaming of when you head into your lane. And no buybacks. Yeah. Okay, they're going to give up the mid lane. That makes sense. They definitely are going to want to defend this with their team up. There's the glyph. Carl's illuminating. Maybe we'll see. Oh. GV also now completed his Lincoln Sphere as well. So something to keep in mind here. Static Storm's up in five and PL's coming in. Yeah, he gets stunned immediately though by Fisher. 
it again. And then that's another tier 3 taken down. Oh my god, just the damage from the Sly of Fist is so much. Now the uh, commission is there for the Dream Call. Haratha's only one caught in it right now. The Juggernaut spinning out. There was a static storm, but everyone walks out of it. But uh, oh no. the Brewmaster has no more mana left to be able to do anything. But it doesn't mean Arthas is going to stay alive. The Sly of Fist is going to be there yet again to take him down. And Juggernaut finishing Death Sword as well. He'll be able to push back on the Ember Spirit. He gets silenced. Arthas Spy is oh back and gets immediately back. blown up. Can he get out of this? Actually does. No, oh. Memnag is going to just spin on him. Nope. Can't actually ravage him out of that. And now the stun is going to be there. Tyrant not taking a lot of damage, but the Manta Style is going to be able to purge off the Mana Leak from Memnetic. Now Yules is there. Hyper Raze is getting stunned yet again from the Enchanted on Memnetic. Going straight towards Amsuda. He's changed his mind. Going over to Bilal now. He's going to be able to spin on him. Actually changed his mind yet again. Tyrant getting taken out by the Illusory Orb. Now the uh, Tide Hunter is going to be in big trouble. So they have the slow. Yet the slow is there from the Diffusal Blade. And Jive is going to be able to help his buddy out here with some magic damage. And Memnetic is going to be able to get a final crit to take him down. And uh, Blinken from Four or three. He doesn't like this puck at all. He does miss the um, initial stun, but can he get the second one? No. He misses Enchant Totem as well. The, the Yules comes out from below, but he cannot get his nope. blink off, and that might spell the end for SFU. Juggernaut has reached the point where, in combination with his team, he doesn't really care. Oh, and Omni Slash for solo support. He just, he just runs around and cuts Simon Fraser up. Yeah, there's a real uh, GG coming out. Yeah, I would imagine. Uh, poor PL got taken out buys back, runs in an Earthshaker, the man with the plan, the guy who shows up for a clutch stun all game long, just jumps on PL, the second Phantom rushed, connects him, stuns him, and he, I don't think he got to play his character. Nope. There was a Ravage, but Juggernaut was already spinning and just took PL out. And that's essentially where I think the game ended. We did get to watch Jug have some fun with Simon Fraser after that, before GG was called. Did after you a say... great laning phase... A crushing defeat, less than half the kills. Yeah. Would you say the MVP goes to 4 or 3 with those amazing fishers? I think I would give it to Jive. On yeah, Jive side, right? also played incredibly well for sure. I he, mean, and he, he, he embodies, I feel, Washington, where he had a rough laning phase and then he just kept it together, kept his composure, and turned it back around. He was 0 and 2 against Puck. I think he might have been 0 and 3 before he got his first kill. Turns a ward into a kill, turns that into a battle fury, and farms his way on creeps and then heroes back into the game. Uh, he was he was leading the charge. He was making space. The first time I felt at any point Washington had any room to breathe is when he got that kill on Puck because of the ward. Yeah, some. Great solo kills from all around. I mean, we saw plenty of solo kills from Jivey to be able to start. I mean, he started with two deaths, but after that, he went 13 1 and 13. Like, and, and Skull being 13 3 and 13. Yeah, the guy really brought it back. And also, Earthshaker, when the support is uh, picking up solo kills on the map, that's mm -hmm. when you know the game has turned around. Earthshaker is a hero that can do that. And I think people forget because a lot of the supports who are being picked up are not necessarily heroes that can do that. Yeah. A little bit greedy, but worth it. Earthshaker. He, he's uh, he's a chaos dunker, and he kind of just did some chaos dunking. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the draft from uh, Washington was just on point, and there was, I don't think, a lot of answers for SFU uh, other than, as you said, just straight up destroying the lanes, which they did, but not well enough, I suppose. I think I think they did well enough, more so they threw it away, and we saw that a lot at right. Tidehunter at first, where he died for kind of no reason he had ravage and he was low health and he was just fighting into them more than he should have and all juggernaut did was hit spin and tidehunter died before spin even ended you know if if juggernaut can kill you in a spin where it's not even close you you gotta you gotta be playing safe at that point you can't just be at a, a health where all juggernaut needs to do is stand on top of you and you die before spin ends because there's nothing you can do in that situation especially that early in the game where you have no items and and few spells yeah all right, so we're going to get ready for game two here. We're going to be probably taking about a five-minute break in between to get these players ready. We'll be right back, so don't go anywhere because more games coming your way. See you guys soon. I can't wait to see who's going to win. Game two, division two.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to SFU versus UW. Hello. Uh, you're going to game two this time. Washington is going to be on the dire side, although the scores on the side says uh, it's a clean game right now. That is untrue. It is 1-0 right now for Washington. Yeah, you, Washington, had a rough start. They kept it together. They brought it back, and Ember Spirit killed a lot of people. He was cleaving creeps, he was cleaving heroes, and then he was cleaving ancients. Similar bands so far. I um, mean, first bands, not much to talk about, honestly. Uh, we've been seeing these bands all the time, Clockwork and Omni Knight. Yeah, this is pretty standard stuff. I imagine we're going to see the, the similar to what we saw last game. Uh, it seemed like both teams were playing reactive to one another. They didn't come in with a strategy, so it's likely going to be similar bands, similar first phase, maybe a couple respect bands, or they might try and switch something up. Uh, in the meantime, when we get through this, we actually... I just got a uh, satellite called in with the University of Washington team. Uh, the player, static.tyrant, you might remember him from last team, actually just transmitted a message uh, to me, and it's been translated. I would like to <laughs> share it all with you. <clears throat> from the words, uh, from the mouth of Tyrant, I'm the founder of the club at UW and play on the C team, but manage all three CSL teams. I'm by far the lowest skill. Oh, well, you're by far humble. the most. The rest of my players are somewhere in Legend. Since we're the lowest skilled team between the three teams, that's what being his CSL teams you manage, uh, our expectations aren't huge, but we enjoy practicing and trying to get better at our skill level. That's why we play Dota, that's why we love it, and that's why we love Collegiate Dota right there. Yeah. <clears throat> Continuing on. We don't expect to win too much, and most of our wins this far have been forfeits. But we're just trying to have fun with the game and get better. Yes, yes, that is the perfect mentality. That is a winning mentality. I'm in love with Static Dot Tyrant. Yeah. That's what I want to hear. He's someone I can get behind. He's someone I can cheer for. Let's go. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it's, it's so kind of it's kind of heartbreaking to hear about those forfeits. I mean, we've I mean experienced a lot of difficulty trying to find div uh, two games to cast a lot. It seems like there are I mean uh, some communication issues between a lot of teams, and maybe some of the teams' the attitudes isn't in the right place, or maybe they're all too busy. But yeah, hopefully, I mean, more teams can show a similar attitude to I mean what Static is showing that kind of you know love for the game and wanting to get better. Exactly. I love the love for the game. And Div 2 is uh, objectively, though, more casual than Div 1. However, Obviously. seeing a first pick Tusk, I mean, that's a scrappy hero. I don't know if we're going to see a casual game. Yeah, I mean, last game we saw the Panda being used quite well. And yet again, we see that Lich from Washington. I love it. I love Static saying, I'm the lowest skilled player. And then I hope they just pick him Lich twice in a row. <laughs> that's just the most, like... Can we please bring my little brother on the Dota team too? <laughs> just give him let or CM. Trust me, he knows how to sacrifice creeps. Yeah, he can. He can hit E. Oh, he knows how to CM level Arcane Aura. Yeah. Okay, so we know what Static's doing. I can respect. And Panda back oh, again. Same. They're same start. Good. I mean, just like the rest of the team, um, Karthus, after a very rough laning phase, brought it back and was playing very and was playing well. He got. A lot of farm. He ended up with the Radiance, I believe, which is amazing. After he was level five, or level he was level five when his support uh, Earthshaker was level six. Yeah. So very slow start, but he picked it back up, and he clearly knows how to play Panda. We discussed it earlier. It's not a pick. You just grow. Oh, Panda is good this game. We should do it. You need to have a Panda player. Yeah. There's Speaking of CM, All right. There we <laughs> oh, go. Oh, it's a flavor drop with Tusk and CM on the same team. Oh. We have I the have Ice have Rack team. One. We do. I will have to watch them in lane to get some of those uh, lore uh, responses. Yeah. Crystal Maiden. They they talk about snowball fights and stuff. Uh, what they need to get is Winter Wyvern now, although it doesn't fit into their draft. Winter Wyvern would uh, round out the ice rack combo. Yeah, and then we would have uh, ice that damages and ice that heals across Winter Wyvern and other <laughs> heroes. Yeah, and ice that saves from Tusk mm -hmm. makes you invulnerable. Yeah. This is looking to be a frosty game. Yep, already three heroes. Banning out a frosty spells. AA, but also a flaming Ember Spirit. The respect ban Ember Spirit, I can respect that respect ban. Yeah, me too. And obviously, you gotta, you gotta. I mean, also another oh, flaming cool. hero. They, 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 they it's just like Pokemon, right? You, you picked your, yeah. you know, ice champions, ice heroes, ice characters, ice Pokemon. You gotta get rid of the fire Pokemon. Oh yeah. 
All right. Well, okay. We're going. We're about to go back into the second phase. Huskar band out. Scared of the cheese. Is this something Washington is known for, or do you That's think they're just way. worried in general? I don't know. I mean, I think they banned Dazzle last time as well. Mm -hmm. In response to the AA pick, this time uh, instead of Dazzle, they There's picked uh, Banty Huskar. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. I want to see some cores. I want to know what these teams are getting into. What what is their what are their tools here? Give me some core picks to work with. I've seen the Lich and the Panda. Tusk I see in almost every game. One of the reasons Tusk goes strong is because he wins the off lane. And there's this the is like the same end. draft. I think University of Washington has this is Dota figured out. And <laughs> they, they, they handled optimal five pick. Mm -hmm. They they picked uh, Juggernaut third pick last time as well, I believe. I'm not. I cannot remember. I would like to point out Tusk is great against Jug though. He can break spinning TP, right. which is a huge deal against Juggernaut. And also, you cannot spin away when you're trapped in shards as well. Of course, one and... of those like CCs that kind of work around that kind of things. Snowball counters Omni Slash oh, and saves yes. Tusk teammates. Tusk is a very strong pick against Juggernaut. So we have a CM picked aura uh, for Sound Fraser, and CM seems like the support. It's kind of weird because um, you usually pick supports to you know kind of like complement your carries, but you, it feels like CM. You pick her, and you gotta pick your carries to complement the CM. Right, you gotta be able to pick heroes that can really utilize that um, mana regen. Anti mage, not really one of them. Anti mage hates mana, and mana. <laughs> but he, he can blink all he wants. Mana. Well, anti mage seems to make sense here. Blink gets away from everybody. Yeah. So far, anti mage isn't often picked up so early, no. but Juggernaut's been revealed. Um. Anime is not too worried about much. Are we going to see a Chain Frost get reflected? Oh, no. That could happen. Oh, interesting. And uh, probably not relevant this game, obviously, uh, if he picks up the Egg and Scepter. But Lich's Chain Frost was nerfed so that you could react to Chain Frost and then put on an Echo Shell on the target that's getting hit by the first blast and then reflect it back before you had to have the um, Lotus Orb on the target before it was cast. Now you can do it as long as the first projectile hasn't landed. Oh, interesting. Wow, so poor Lich. I feel like Lich has a hard time. He's just a hero that really just feels like he's only good in lane and Chain Frost is just the worst ultimate. Like, it might be one of the worst ults yeah. in the game. Yeah. It just doesn't... I mean, it doesn't... You know, it you doesn't need to play like, anymore either, which sucks. No, you only need to play a few games of Dota to realize that when Lich casts alt, you don't group up, and only a few more to realize you just don't group up whenever there's a Lich. Yeah. Chain Frost never really feels good. Sometimes it feels great, though. And yeah. I know if there's a Chain Frost, I might scream. I will scream. But it's rare you actually get to see one like that. It's kind of like Crystal Maiden's ult is uh, kind of the same way. It's really, really lame most of the time. And sometimes you land the one single dream ult and you get like three kills in a team fight and you're like, oh, oh yeah. my god, I'm such a good support. CM's ult does insane damage. The only problem is CM has to be in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tusk is uh, vulnerable to AoE heroes though, such as spells like, like Chain Frost, because if he does a multi-man snowball, he's setting Lich up for a great yeah. ult. Washington taking a lot of time on this pick. 30 seconds left in their reserve time. Oh, finally they hasn't pick. stumped. Oh, same team! Yeah. 403, let's go. So who's <laughs> replacing Ember Spirit? It's not OD. Oh, you can't pick Ember Spirit. Oh, mm -hmm. Sam Fraser ruined it. Who is going to go against the anti-mage? Ten seconds remaining. It, uh, I mean, Medusa is so common, but I don't think you pick Medusa into. No. <laughs> that seems a little too crazy. Yeah, that that, that seems like suicide. Dire team ban. Oh, and there's Russell a Bristleback. Back. All right, that guy, that, he can utilize mana. That guy likes mana. Yes, he definitely loves mana. Tusk as well, uh, speaking of. Hey, man, this is so close to Lord Draft because Tusk and Bristleback are also oh, buds yeah. as well. No, they're, they they fought each other. Yeah, but they're like rivals. They like each other. They, yeah, they but they're not like they're like I brawl don't buddies. They're, I don't know. I, mean, I feel that. like there's I'll love have to between check my the two. Dota two Lorapedia, and there's the Death Prophet ban. Okay, I was gonna say maybe Death Prophet gets picked up by Washington. What do I know? <laughs> um, so I have yet to see a Bristleback not suffer from Bristleback Syndrome. When I bring this up every game, and the Bristleback Syndrome is where you think you're tankier than you are because you're playing a tanky hero and you just die a hundred times in the laning phase. Remaining. I see that every time that hero's picked. 
And Bristleback kind of has one of two outcomes. Uh -huh. Bristleback owns his lane. Yep. And, and kind of snowballs around until he doesn't or until he wins. Or Bristleback loses his lane and then farms Ancients for the rest of the game, desperately trying to keep up. With <laughs> he never can. And he just is soaks up farm and does nothing with it. And then the team loses. Yeah, it, it feels very similar uh, in the way Timbersaw also kind of transitions as well. Very tanky hero. And at games, he is like the god of OS frogging, you know, people yeah. with just being invincible. And some games, he just gets off to a bad start and Timbersaw yeah, can't do anything. Yeah. So, this might be the game where we see a Bristleback actually do what he's supposed to do. Do well in lane and take, take that momentum and turn it into a ton of space. And space is great for Animage. Alright, Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit. Ooh, this is a very late game draft here from uh, SFU. I've, I like this a lot because Animage is going to require a lot of attention a lot of lockdown. Yep. Storm Spirit requires a lot of attention a lot of lockdown. And Bristleback is a hero that can't be left alone. Right. So it puts a lot of pressure on University of Washington Dota. They have to hit their spells on multiple targets and cast their spells masterfully. Because League of Ancients is... They need a lot of attention in teamfights. It's very hard to fight around that team. It's mobile. It does a lot of damage. And what are we going to see? A Viper. Viper. All right. So Washington is going to basically respond to this late game team from SFU by just going like early game. We are going to try to dominate your strategy, I guess. I am feeling Simon Fraser. Yeah, I mean, if they can make it out of the early game, um, I don't think Washington has any answers to all these picks because, especially with the Viper, I mean, only one with a great instant stun is Earth uh, Shaker, and as you said, uh, Bilal on the Storm Spirit and Dust War on the Anti Mage needs to eat that um Echo Slam to be able to be taken down, but it's only one Echo Slam to go around. And look at the cosmetics on Simon Fraser. Tusk is battle ready. Crystal Maiden is already carrying an Observer Ward and has a cannon. <laughs> Those are gold bashers on any mage. He's making it rain. Speaking of making it rain, Bristleback's got the Immortal and then the Classic Storm set. Still looking good. League of Ancients team looks a lot scarier to me than Washington's team. Even with the Viper pickup, I still like... If Bristleback gets the early game he wants and our boy... Our Torx is on him. That player is insane. Yeah. If Bristleback gets the early game that they want, they're not really going to care that even though Viper does great against Bristleback, Viper doesn't do great against Animage and doesn't do great against Storm Spirit. Yeah. Storm Spirit also is great against Juggernaut. I really like Simon Fraser's draft a lot. Something interesting is because the Viper has the new break on the hero, if they can chain stun the AM, that break will be able to at least counter his magic resistance for the time being. Mm -hmm. But there's not too much magic damage really coming out. No, not really. So into the game we go. Yep. Uh, so over on the Radiant side, which is SFU, we have Bilal again playing the Storm Spirit. Over on the CM is MS Sutras. Over on the Bristleback is Arthrax. And we have Hyper Rays on the Tusk. I believe he was the offlane last time, so a little bit of a switcheroo going on here. And finally, Deathward playing the Anti Mage. On Washington, the boy is trying to defend. Defend, and and, and uh, they took the lead, but trying to defend an undef untarnished streak. We have Jive on Viper, looking for that early game. Tyrant, the humble, the lovable on the very lovable Lich in lane, at least. Meme Tick which is how I like to pronounce it, That's on so Juggernaut. Uh, Carthus. Catharsis. Catharsis? Oh, yeah, maybe Catharsis. Catharsis. Yeah. on Brewmaster. And 403, the greatest area code in Alberta, on Earthshaker. There may be many Earths, but there's only one Earthshaker. Also, look at this Tusk Cloak. That looks so sick. Oh, uh, where is he? Oh, yeah, he, he, looks like, he looks like a hero in that cloak. Yeah. He's, he, he's, he leveled he's up. Bad already. Oh, they got shards. Is great for fighting early right here. They can catch Panda. He doesn't have a team though. He's gonna oh go yeah, there it. is a nice shards coming off Hyper Rays. It's gonna be able to get a few auto attacks in here. Just a couple. Uh, some damage. Does Tusk usually have a weapon? Or at least, I mean, this skin makes it look like he has a ridiculous. It's very weapon prominent. On him. Yeah. Because well, he usually has a boxing glove sort of thing going on. Right. A boxing glove and a little hatchet, an ice hatchet. <laughs> Instead of hatches, now he has a he has shield a... and a mace. Yeah. 
And he uh, still Tusk flams actually didn't people. Block creeps though, which is strange. It's one of the best reasons to pick the hero. Um, Secures the rock lane in the first wave. I guess they wanted to go for a fight, but didn't take it. Any mage versus panda. Uh, I feel like any oh, any mage actually went blink a level one. He can't burn the man or mana burn the panda out. I guess it was Tusk scared because he got invaded very early. Uh, 403 using the same item build he did last time. Boots three clarities. He can't take any damage. He doesn't really offer anything to lane but a Fisher. Yeah, kind of a strange build skipping that uh, Tango. I love uh, Lich versus Bristleback. I think that's great. Lich should definitely be against the Bristleback. Bristleback's laning phase is extremely important, and Lich is very strong in lane. Yeah. Battle bottom. 403 got caught out. 403 has to go home. And now Panda can't go to lane. 403's gonna <laughs> stick around. Yeah, and Catharsis just kind of. <laughs> CSing away, ignoring what's happening to his support. I mean, that's not much you can do at level 2 anyways. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as you said, now 4-3. Probably gotta walk back to base. Not things he can He's do He's got the boots to get there quicker. Yeah. Oh, that's, mid lane, that's Bilal tough, actually slows down Jivey. Oh, Hyper Race comes out and the shards are there, Bilal. Can they finish off the kill? They tried to plant the uh, branch. I think he was trying to line of sight them, but it wasn't good enough. The first blood going over to that Storm Spirit. Planted a tree on his grave. Oh, I think Tusk should go eat that tree. <laughs> and, oh, Block Hood, but he obviously has his tango on mm -hmm. cooldown. And Viper yeah. takes it, even if he's full health. Crystal Maiden. It could go to the jungle, but will likely just help out in lane. Gosh, that's I just realized the long duration. Oh, Bilal again dove. Jivey wants revenge here. One more right click will do it, and he does take it. Takes a lot of damage Jivey for that, but care. very much worth it. Yeah, Hyper Ray's. A little bit too late to help his uh, mid laner out. Just gonna Juggernaut, soak some XP. Juggernaut's almost doubling the next person in CS, and it's his teammate on Viper, who is wow. tied with any mage, though. Oh, Arthur's getting game. spun on right now. He does have his back turned to them, but oh, the damage is so much. Oh, Stag Tyrant gets taken down by a creep. Medic almost as well. That was so close to double kill for Bristleback, but that's how it goes when you're hunting the Bristleback. And now Panda's alone and Animage knows it. Starts smacking around, taking his mana. Actually misses the range creep, CS, to, to burn Panda's mana. That's how much he hates mana. Yeah, he really, really hates mana, guys. Three players bottom. Tusk has Snowball, but he's spotted up by the ward. I don't know if we're going to see any action from that. And Juggernaut. Strangely enough, when your support ports in, usually they can give you a regen when you're low. But it was 403. <laughs> who is notoriously carrying regen. So Juggernaut's just running out of no health. Level 4 Juggernaut will skill healing uh, ward very likely. Yeah. Especially with CM. Never mind, CM's on the other team. What am I talking about? 403's trying to set up a uh, Fisher on Storm Spirit, who's very weak when he does not have his ult because he can't escape and doesn't really want to be up in people's faces, but also wants to be up in people's faces so he can get static remnant damage. Yeah, he is sided by this ward, though, uh -oh, so Tyrant Bilal like knows he's there. Bilal actually going to go up here to find 403. He's going to stun him up. Static remnant is there as is well. But is this a little bit too greedy? Hyper Ray is also coming to help. 403 trying to deny himself to the Ancients, but Bilal plays it patiently and gets the last hit. There we Great go. warding there. We there. Go. Oh, Juggernaut baiting with healing ward. I love that. Now he's finally uh, um, microing the healing ward. We saw mm -hmm. some awful micro at the start of the last game. <laughs> and Tyrant just goes and collects his bounties. Tyrant likes the and money. How's Annie Mage doing? Oh, well, Annie Mage is top, tied, tied to Bristleback for CS, top for his team, but Juggernaut's still number one. Uh, Bristleback's getting a lot out of lane, though, and that's very important. Yeah. He's almost. Almost. Actually, Juggernaut just a little bit behind. Oh, 403 is coming top, though. Three heroes committed. Yeah, I don't Arthur's think they have to get an Sticking around is going to be able to get slowed down as well. Metric taking a lot of quill cool sprays, but it's not going to be enough to take him down. And that's second death for Arthrox and Memnetic. And Juggernaut still gets going it. real strong. Juggernaut's looking to be scary, but there's an anti mage and a bristleback. Yeah. The bristleback has a death. He sells quite a bit of farm. Middle lane, both players just kind of just farming. Uh, Viper are slightly higher level. Not surprising, Viper slightly edging. Roaming. 403 making use of the boots. Panda bottom. 
Just getting harassed. Tusk is here though. Oh, they might, oh, go, they for might go for something players. here. Yeah, that the uh, shards is there on point. Yet again, that's kind of blinks a little bit too far away. But the frostbite is there to keep him around. Evade they... coming out. Oh, can they get him? Okay, no snowballs. Probably gonna seal the there deal, is. and the final hit is going to land four or three, almost with the saving Fisher yet again, but not just there in time. Viper has his alt. Yeah, I was gonna say he's very <laughs> likely gonna use it. Before, just spits at him uh, and walks away. Rude. Might as well before ball lightning, right? Yeah. Like, is he gonna do? Oh, not below. Kind of getting aggressive here. Teleport. There is a pool coming in. He's a little a tusk they're teleporting in. Oh, <laughs> takes the storm spirit here. for the ride. The slows are there, but uh, Bilal doesn't want to commit any more to this. Just wants to kill more of the storm spirit. Yeah, uh, corrosive skin. Very scary spell, obviously, when you're low health. I think, unless Juggernaut gets some help, uh, we're gonna see. Bristleback win the lane because yeah. Bristleback slowly beating Juggernaut down, bullying him out of this. Oh, magnetic going in, Arthux. Uh, he's not microing. Uh, he, I think he, he micros it back to him. Kind of lost a lot of duration there, but yeah. Gotta watch out spinning on the Bristleback. Of course, the Bristle being physical uh, pierces magic immunity. Oh, now that's we're getting bottom, uh, but... stunned, but uh, he just blinks out. Anti mage, anti mage things. Yeah, for 403. It... Or spirits or shaker can't really kill any mage any or he has to catch him after blink is on cooldown yeah so not gonna be a fruitful lane for him and we kind of go back to our slow stalemate everyone's just farming panda getting a lot more farm than he did last game <laughs> cm just runs around and frostbites people level four in the Very cm as well second level arcane aura going away very happy for the team. Of course, you know, Storm Spirit obviously enjoys that. Getting sped on again by the Viper Strike in mid lane. So much damage from that. Like, what else is Viper going to spend his mana on? Might as yeah. well, especially once you know Storm Spirit can't, uh, can't do anything about it. It does a lot of damage. Oh, top lane. Bristleback. Top lane. Oh, yeah. Bristleback can call again. Omni. Omni Slash from um, Mimetic Ovi. <laughs> and the final strike even getting used to pick up a CS as well. Efficiency. That's value. Two games, Juggernaut. Oh, oh. bot lane now. Hyper Rays just getting hit by a big crit from the Panda, but he's TPing in mid now. Jivey was going in to dive. Oh, there is a Frostbite. Here comes a roll in from the two Frosty Arrows, and then the Lightning. Easy. The Law is going to, be able to take that. That's the elements right there. Oh, 403 might get a fish. Oh my god, I thought he was going to get a fish. <laughs> scare me like that. Yeah. Oh. It was a level 1 Fisher, but Storm Spirit only had 90 health. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, that would have been so embarrassing. Yeah. There's a regen top. I don't know if anyone sees it. Oh, they Don't would have loved that, but he is back in base. Yeah. Bitch. And Bristleback. So two games in a row, we see peop uh, the offlaner getting cocky against a Bristleback with Omni Slash up. Yeah. And it leads to a kill. And here we go. Jive's back. They have a Fisher. I don't think they can kill a Tusk. The tusk can't lane against a, a Viper, though. I mean, it's, being, it's hard being a melee hero against uh, Viper. I mean, it's hard to be any hero against Viper. Blitz returns top, but actually Bristleback's the top uh, top CS in the game. Pretty much tied, though, with Juggernaut. Yeah. And just followed by Annie Mage. Surprising with three deaths in lane. He's doing quite well. And, and it's just kind of going back to the same oh, stuff. Oh, Frostbite on the bot lane. Catharsis has the split, but now not anymore. I guess the mana burned off. Uh, the sword is not going to commit the blink. There is the bottle on Catharsis. We'll get the split up again. Middle lane. Uh, Bilal again getting Viper struck. Not dodging it. Arthas actually gets the kill on Mimetic. He's actually going for Tyrant as well. Tyrant one more last hit. There's nothing a support can do against that. Arthas taking that lane back. Oh, yeah. Oh, he. that feels good. That feels so good, and now this is what we want. This is when Rizzleback's going to start getting real big. Lich and Juggernaut aren't enough to deal with them when Omni Slash is down. Omni Slash will be back up, though, when they return. Yeah. Of course, during Omni Slash, you're not getting cool sprayed, which has been a big problem going for that kill. And Bilal struggling, as expected. Oh, bot lane missing a kill again. It looks like that was a M's. So try taking that kill with probably a right click there and Frostbite. Two heroes. Are Turks actually coming mid? I don't. I think he's just gonna go to the jungle. I don't think he's gonna do anything against the viper. Yeah. Bilal is trying to look for a rune, but it's gonna take some harass from him. Actually, I've focused on the CS. Sorcerer's having a very difficult time. Yeah, I can't get in range for help. CS, and now Arthrex is coming and taking a CS. <laughs> going is that pipe first? He's going. Yeah. 
Oh uh, yeah, it is. At least uh, the casual cloak at the very least, or hood mm -hmm. rather. And three players heading top. Oh, they want to shrine up. Makes sense. Shower party. And then the game slows down. But we have Earthshaker setting up bottom. I don't know if he's been spotted. Yes, Earthshaker has been spotted. They know he's there. I don't think anything's going to come from that. In the meantime, Jug's free farming and Viper's free farming. Committing three heroes top to kill a Juggernaut. And he's, the Storm Spirit's been spotted out. Uh-oh. And Earthshaker's get, Earth getting pinged out. Both teams are just getting countered by wards right now. Yeah. None of, both trying to make a move and both failing because of sight. So Perseverance being finished up here for Death Sword. Looking towards the Battle Fury, obviously. Uh, looks like the same build coming out from Mimetic on the top lane. Oh, mid lane. Yeah, mid lane. Another dive coming from JV. Has he gone too far though? CM is TPing in. Looks like he is going to be okay. Top lane, however, Artex is going on Mimetic again. Oh, he was trying to cast Omni Slash, oh, no. but the Hyper Rays with great... Really well timed snowball saving his team and of course the stun coming out afterwards, letting Arthros finish that kill while Omni Slash is being cast. God, that's so strong because Bristleback is in a position to, to kill Juggernaut to kill Lich. And having a uh, Tusk with him means that Bristleback doesn't have to be scared of Omni Slash, which is the only way they take that lane back unless there's an insane chain frost. So yeah. together, those two, the Tusk and Bristleback, can probably kill anyone on the map right now as working together. Yeah, that, that kill actually brought Bristleback's net worth above the Juggernaut. Bristleback, we might see the Bristleback game. Yeah. We might see a game where Bristleback does more than just farm ancients. Uh oh, oh, Bristleback. He's down right now, but he's just going to TP out. He knows they have no stun. And he has a hood up as well, so he doesn't take much damage from the spin. He doesn't even care. Yeah. Shrug he doesn't even off. pop the hood. That's how confident he yep. was. <laughs> Uh, Battle Fury is obviously going to be first item on Animage. He has the yep. Demon Edge queued up, and he's just over a thousand gold away. He's had a pretty good game, top CSer at the moment, and top net worth. Yeah, same for Juggernaut as well. Oh, he has a perseverance mid. already. Three players mid, and Bilal actually stuns up the Viper. He does try to defend himself with the Neurotoxin, yeah, but it isn't going to be enough. Yeah, uh, Citra is just going to dance on him and give the kill to Storm Spirit as well. Perfect plays. Top lane now, Tusk. Looking for more Juggernaut blood. Oh, yeah. And Juggernaut, uh, I think, wants the Omni slash. So we might see a fight. But there was the Observer Ward spotting out that TPN. Tusk is here as well now. Yeah. Top lane. Or rather, he was. Yeah, they know he's here thanks to that uh, deep ward that they have. Committing two wards to the Juggernaut. Uh, bot lane, there was Echo Slime committed, but not enough stun and or damage to take down Death Ward. He was gonna blink out. He's staying around. He gets smacked in the back of the head by the panda, but the fisher slightly off the mark, which means they won't be able to chase him into the woods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any mage is very difficult to kill uh, right now with Simon Fraser's lineup. That's word. Use your tango. Oh yeah, he did. It. Or rather, with Washington's Radiant lineup. Yeah. Uh, more harassing with anti mage. Oh, another crit to the back of the head. Can they find oh. the kill? He's not going to blink. He's holding on to the blink. Really hard. Oh, 403 not coming out. Enchant Totem is going to be there. A stun followed up by the Earth Panda. Oh no, 403, if you stay for one more auto attack, that was a kill. Uh, he's going to be able to let him get away. Bristleback now spinning in the air. Now they're looking for the Crystal Maiden, but they don't want to stick around this fed. Bristleback though, 403 getting chased down now. Are the, oh my god, the Cool Spray does stack up Karthus. Four uh, Cool Sprays as well. Five, and one more oh, will do no, it. It's just going right clicks. No, give it to the Anti Mage. He deserves there it. There it is. <laughs> Anti Mage Gaming, boys. After all the last 14 minutes spent missing his auto attacks to. to, to uh... Drunken Haze, yeah. any mage gets the kill. That's gotta <laughs> feel good. Oh, that's gotta feel so good. And see him even been showing up. I love it. Rotating around. Yep. Oh, Viper mid lane tower, right now, there's a it. jump in. Jive getting stunned up. Kind of stacking those stuns right now. The punch goes out, but the Fisher is going to block him off for a very long time. But the damage is there for Jive, and he's very tanky. Stun oh. comes out of 4-3. Do they have enough damage? Chain Frost, can that seal the deal? Yes, it will. 4-3 now, very low. CM coming in as well. The tower has one hit away. Literally three health, but the Sutra is going to dance on the Earthshaker and get the deny. This CM Ooh. does everything. This CM does... Is here for oh, oh, meanwhile, Arthrex, yeah, he's not he done. Arthrex, he knows he doesn't have to split. Oh, he gets scared by the slow. Yeah, he, he's not going to commit to that. Taking a lot, too much damage from the tower. 
So am I using his hood either. And in the meantime, Animage does what Animage does. He's about to finish a Battle Fury, and we're going to see a lot more of this. Him farming on the sidelines. Yeah, Jive TPing in. And what's he going to do? There it is. Battle Fury oh, completed. Double damage. Double damage. Is he, is he going to find it? Yes, he is. <laughs> double damage for to kill creeps with. Yeah. Oh, there's a stack here of the Ancients they could take, but it uh -oh. is the scary Prowler Shaman. Who's back gets Omni top? Yeah, but he doesn't care now. He's too tanky. Yeah. Oh, that was also that level one. Now he now. might get turned around on Arthrax. Quarter help, but he he's he's not afraid. It's Especially... likely we'll see a push now, I believe. Yeah. With his buddy Tusk behind him. Yeah, split and Omni down. So great position for Simon Fraser to be in. They they're uh Bristleback is just insane right now. Yeah. And what's he going? Oh, Solar Crest. Oh, Arthrax. They know the uh, Omni Slash isn't available. A Snowball is going to be there to save Hyper Rays. Uh, a solo Echo Slime because I have a 403. I'm not sure if that was exactly what he was looking for. Arthrax is going to keep running, keep cool spraying. Mm -hmm. uh, he's playing <laughs> very care. brave here. He only has 200 health, but he is Bristleback. Oh, no. I watch out about this chasing is a, such this. a strong position. Oh, to be and in a the trees. great earn usage. He's going to be able to get a lot of health out of that. Sutra here as well, punch onto the Lich, he's taking a huge amount of damage, but oh that shard's actually not working out for him. Arthrax now is chasing him down, Urn being used as well, one more hit will do it, he will take it down. Sutra now dances on the Juggernaut, but he has a healing oh, ward on him, but he wins that fight! Yeah. His dance is stronger yeah, than the ward the now, uh, Bristleback is bloodthirsty, he wants more, 4 or 3 getting chased down. Bristleback is going to have steak for dinner tonight, one more cross spray <laughs> is going to take it down. Actually not enough, the stick actually be able to save him for now. Now, but the auto attack is there, the split comes out, but oh, I don't think there's much he can used. do. Where's the stun? Here's a cyclone coming out to Bristleback. Just so slow him for a little bit, but he is so tanky right now. He doesn't care about these pandas. No, oh, and when this Jive's ends, yeah, he got turned around. But in the back line, Jive is looking for some juicy supports to kill. Arthurus is very low as well. Uh, there is a Viper Strike, but oh, he's not going to be able to get out, even with the break on him. Now, so truck, can you get out of here alive? There is a slow, but no Viper Strike, of course. There is the Frostbite to slow him down, and now a Shards. This fight doesn't end. Actually, it is going to end right now. And a very long fight, and... Simon Fraser playing that incredibly well. Arturix, MVP, when they got into the trees above the side shop, it turned the, the entire fight turned around. Arturix was extremely low. He's getting chased down. He gets in those trees. They can't follow him in because they have to find him. And if they don't, he's going to stack up a ton of coils. He's hitting everybody. On top of that, Tusk was floating the sigil around, slowing Washington and giving sight so they knew where to run in the trees. Yeah, they while giving Urn to Bristleback as well, so he yeah, healed he during the Yeah, like 55% HP when he went back into that fight and just killed everybody. Yeah. Arturix, MVP, Tusk, Assist Master. Yeah. That was insane. I thought the fight, w there was no way Simon Fraser could turn that. They get in the trees and Washington's just in an awful position. Looks like they're trying to force this uh, tier 1 top here from... Washington, but look what's going on in the other yeah, lanes. mid lane. It anti mage doing anti mage thing. He's just gonna take the tower. Does he care? Not about the brewmaster, but he cares if there's two people and there. So he's gonna blink out. And now the fight breaks out top. Yeah, top. Arthur being who he is, man's up on top lane. Oh, that Omni slash no. gets him on to the other side of the Fisher. That's and not what he wanted. Down. That front, we had three heroes grouped up, and it goes to the, the creep wave. Oh my goodness. And he gets him also all of the Fisher as well, so he traps him and now oh, this Tyrant, he might have harder gold, but he can't survive this stance from Sutra. Oh man, the CM freezing field has been used to great effect so far. Oh yeah. These are Im amazing freezing fields. Well that last one was very unlucky, almost no damage, but still, every freezing field so far has been very effective at getting a kill or at least contributing to it, including the one where you just freezing field man fight the juggernaut. And Bilal just finished the bloodstone as well, so he's gonna be very happy with that. Bill gets some stacks on some that. Kills. Oh, that's where it finds a huge stack here overall on the Washington. But yeah, be careful no, oh. no, no. <laughs> that's not what you it. do. Oh, he those... up 50 seconds, he's out. <laughs> those prowler shamans. Oh my goodness, what was he thinking? That was like, a, yeah, what, like five stack? There was a four stack, I see two here. The last gonna come here to finish it off. That was a prowler yeah. shaman that he got killed by. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, here's a ledge. Uh, <laughs> hello! Uh, I'm trying to check on my stack here, but now I'm getting That's destroyed by charge. three heroes. Mandinor in charge. 
Okay, Simon Fraser, map control. They bait yeah. the AM oh, and die to neutrals. Goes because... hit on the shrine here with medics. Like, leave me alone, I'm in base. And Bristlebacks, okay, I'm going to leave, bye. Look at what Bristlebacks made. <laughs> yes. Tusk is now taking Ancients. They want these Ancients real bad. They're gonna, they'll give them two. We'll leave them two. They, 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 they feel charitable today. 403 actually on the side. Getting a little bit of farm. Not too far from Blink Dagger. 500 gold. Um, what was I say? Oh, Bristlebacks going Radiance. I love it. Yeah. Go when you're doing this well, might as well. That that's the space creating item. I think that's going to combo extremely well with Annie Mage and Storm Spirit. Apart from the fact that it's going to, uh, he's everywhere Bristleback goes, is just going to be carnage. It's going to make so much space. And when it comes to team fighting, the passive just being in the fight with Radiance, doing damage and causing blind, already Washington has their work. I guess slowed to down by Nasal Goo. He does have the blade mail, but it's not going to be enough. It's definitely going to just take him down. Chain Frost just getting tanked up by the team here. It goes into the Ancients. Uh, now that's going to be it for now. Oh my god, big crit on Death Sword. Almost kills him. And he runs right into Echo Slap. And Omni Slash going to finish him off. Not the way he wanted to blink there. 403 is going to be able to pay the price there. Hyper Rays now in big trouble. Bilal trying to degenerate some mana to be able to get out. 17 stacks in the Bloodstone. And Hyper Rays going, oh no, he has a vision to roll in. But no, that doesn't get him to the low ground. Snowball, what's going on? Bilal. Yeah, he's going to be okay. Whoa, CM, why are you doing back here? No, it's because Arthur is here. And back him up. Uh -oh. oh my god, he gets channeled the ulti for so long. Arthur, can you take a kill? Yeah, the spray goes out. Tyrant, more, you gotta be careful more. as well. Tyrant's gonna be okay. Medic taking that kill on 917 gold going over the Tyrant for that kill. A 3k gold swing for that greedy fight there from SFU. Yeah, they I think they're we see this all the time where a team has a strong start and then they get become overconfident overextend a little bit it started off looking all right but then it gets turned around humongous gold swing as you pointed out uh, pointed out simon fraser still in the lead with 6k but that is going to slow them down also taking bloodstone charges off dropping actually storm spirit didn't die just kidding yep no he's he, he's the only one he that survived speaking of him down a viper right yeah, now he's getting chased down His no support in sight as well but he does have full mana Storm Spirit's higher level than Viper now. Unlike in the laning phase for the entirety of that. Yeah. Oh, and oh, he jumps in. Oh, this is what it feels like to play support against a Storm Spirit. You're just going to get clicked down. Even 18 stacks in the Bloodstone. Look at that almost 30 mana again. He loves it. He loves it. Give this Kaya Lich next. some protection. Oh, Orchid next. I guess. I like it. Orchid a Juggernaut. What's he going to do? He, or, Juggernaut has to Manta out of it. Juggernaut is building Manta. Orchid a Panda. What's Panda going to do? Yeah, sound seems pretty good this game, huh? Mm -hmm. Speaking of, uh, Orchid might be an item some of these heroes on uh, Washington might also want to think about, but now mid lane Arthur is chasing down Jive. He's slowed down by the Nasal Guru and nowhere to go. Gets punched up into the air, but actually surviving for a very long time with that Blade Mail. Gets finally taken down, and he can coming in there to snatch that Bloodstone uh, stack, netting now trying to spin, but doesn't have a oh. TP to TP out. He wanted the Omni, you saw him standing there just trying to get it off, he gets taken out. Yeah, second time oh, this happened this game. Sure. Oh, now Brewmaster in the Another wrong place at the wrong stone. time. Gets stunned, oh, can he get a split off? No, he's not even going to try. Oh, gets punched into the air, Hyper Ray is going to take that kill. Simon Fraser is dominating now, almost three times the kill. They're, look, now after they, they just lost the fight and then they take the whole gold advantage, like back almost immediately, now up to 11k, 12k, yeah. they are at 6k when that fight ended. They just doubled their advantage since then. And I don't know if, wa I, Washington needs Simon Fraser to overextend again, and we might see uh -oh. it here, look at this. There's a blink dagger on the CM, even CM doing quite well. Oh my god, the chain frost though, Arthur is taking a lot of damage, he's gonna be taken by a tower. Meanwhile, Bilal builds to take down the support, now... Earthshaker is his target, he's getting slowed down by the overload, but he's going to get out, oh no, the shards is on spot! Hyper Ray is going to take that now, Jive wants to be able to avenge his teammate, misses the nether toxin, uh, Hyper Ray is hiding, and he actually gets the TP off, so he'll be safe, Bilal, now in trouble, he does get the TP off as well, oh, tragic oh here for Washington, so close to getting those kills. They want the T3. They want the T3 to open shrines up, but I don't think it's the right play. Yeah, anyway, he doesn't either. Yeah. Backs right out. Getting a little bit too so, greedy with those dives. Uh, Bristleback thought he could go in, but he got destroyed by those tier 4s. Look how much damage they ended up doing to the mid T3. They barely even touched it. They just yeah. wanted blood, not objectives. 
I mean, when, when you got heroes like a fat bristle back in a storm, I guess all you know is to kill enemy heroes. Yeah, and you could even just look at the net worth graph. Top three are all Simon Fraser. They're feeling good, and they just they just wanna they just wanna continue having fun with this stomp. Yeah, the stomp against Washington, the undefeated Washington, the comeback kids from last game. Are we gonna see them be comeback kids again? Yeah, if they can come back to this game, it'll be quite remarkable here with a team that's um, not uh, as strong, yeah. I would say, against the uh, SFU Ryan. But of course, never say never in Dota. Orchid is up now. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see Panda taken out immediately, turning into a team fight win. Yeah. Again, Arthrox posturing aggressively towards this mid tower. He's alone, though. Tuska? Tuska's nearby, sorta. Yeah, Tuska's a blink dagger. Yeah, Tuska's close. Any mage has a manta, and the pipe is finished on Bristleback. Oh, he's just gonna go up here. Yeah, that's where it uh, finishes off that tower, which had no health left. Manta's off the Drunken Haze. The Fisher's coming in. The Enchant Totem, but he takes no damage thanks to the pipe. And then we'll back off. That opens up, and meanwhile, looks like there was a Juggernaut kill. Yeah, that Orchid reveal. Doing very good here, Bilal, in the uh, safe lane. I was going to say, yeah, Sorcerer's off. across the map, but he's still helping his team. Kills the carry. Now, Simon Fraser's in a great position to push. It's four on four, but they do have a storm. Once Storm Spirit gets there, it'll be five on four. Storm Spirit up to 24 charges and going for yeah. Shiva's guard. Love 51 it. 51 mana regeneration on him per second. It's insane. Yeah, with the Orchid and the 24 charge bloodstone. Just gonna go take out Shrines. We'll see a Roche attempt very soon from, or they'll see a Roche taken very soon from Simon Fraser, unless Washington can make a move to stop it. Earthshaker is great at Roche fights. Viper now is with his AoE, and Lich is. So this could be what exactly what Washington needs to get back into the game. Also, something uh, interesting here: Crystal Maiden did hit level 15, which gave her the 14% mana cost and mana loss reduction talent. Which Storm Spirit what? loves. That's so cool. Yeah, he doesn't even need to pick yeah. up. Um, what is that item called? Kaya this Kaya. game because uh, CM has got him covered. Jeez, that's ridiculous. I didn't even know. I don't oh, read her. That's we're going quite like aggressive here. here alone. He uses Blink to jump up. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage, but of course Blink's a very low cooldown. Oh, the stun is there from the Fisher. He's gonna pay for it. No, that's what you get. Yep. No one aggressive. on his team is even nearby. Yeah, he used a Blink and um, Manta aggressively, which meant that he had no way to take off slows off of him, and you know he was taking a lot of damage before he could get his Blink up again. Mm -hmm. What's well, his talents? He took the Blink cooldown talent. I think he, he'll learn from that. He's going for Aghanims, which is what I love to see. So what does he can he reflect? He has Viper Strike. He has oh, chain meanwhile, frost. Arthrox getting 3v1 right now. He's Can they stun him? Now. Yeah, they got the stun, and the Omni Slash is going to take it that. Actually, 403 taking that with an auto attack. 403 is happy about that. 403 is very happy about that. Yeah, um, SFU, they got to watch out they don't slip too much this game. Definitely. I think losing Animage and losing Respect at the same time, I think Simon Fraser is going to realize they need to stop screwing around. Roshan's still up, the Shrines are down, group up, maybe oh, get a pick. Oh. Lich, uh, Tyrant being a poison 5 against the Fed Storm there Spirit. A sad time. The Soul Burn is going to be able to take that down. And so that actually, it's going to be a Hex, not a Shiva's Guard. Storm Spirit changed his mind. He just like wants more, more CC. As you said, the Silence is very good this game, and Hex being just kind of like a uber Silence. Oh yeah. Can't even purge it off anymore. Any mage, thousand gold away from Aghanim Scepter. Roshan still up. And Glimmer Cape picked up on CM. Glimmer Cape has, or CM has Glimmer Cape Blink Dagger. That's the build you you. That, those are the items you build when you just want to hit R on CM. And yep. if someone wants to pick CM <laughs> and hit R, I can respect that. Hyper Race tried to just uh, shards uh, CM in, but he missed it. <laughs> He can land it on enemies, but can't land it on you. Know, I mean, you can tell SFU as you said, they're just having fun. Uh, you can see as like any mage is by himself just farming the enemy jungle. He doesn't care. He's just playing a farmed any mage. Sword Spear is playing a farm storm. Yeah. Spear. Meanwhile, we have Washington who are posturing to actually play a real game here, but everyone's just farming up. Oh, yeah. up? That's hex completed up. as well on uh, Storm Spirit. D Ward, I think we'll see a fight soon. I hope we'll see a fight too soon, but I also think we will. Ooh, Arcane, Arcane Rune. Rune. Arcane Rune hacks, they gotta do it. They gotta do it. Yeah. 
Are they going to give it to Storm Spirit or are they going to give it to Bristleback? Uh, uh, Storm Spirit has a bottle ring right now. No, the uh, Aegis rather. Oh, the Aegis, yeah. Makes sense. I think you give it to Storm Spirit. I think Storm I mean, he's one of the best heroes, right, in the game for Highest the Aegis because he can utilize the mana as well. He gets to save his Bloodstone charges and he gets to use a Hex twice. Yeah. Yeah, and it only makes sense on the Storm Spirit. Oh, he pops the Arcane Rune. Zapping around. Check, yeah, checks for a yep. checks for a smoke quickly. Goes, and there it goes. Down. Aegis goes to Storm. Oh, and Spirit Vessel already ready for Hyper Rays. Arthrax is going to be healing up. Oh, 80 <laughs> HP per second with the Hyper Soul. Oh, and a gigantic ball in for Bilal. He's going to miss the initial damage. Oh, but the dodges are all there for the Panda. It's going to uh -oh, be a hard kill. Uh, now Bilal got to get out, but he has the Arcane Rune. He can zip for days. That's Viper all down, and Storm Spirit is going to be full managed. Yeah, oh, and an Echo Slam there on two. They won't be able to take down the Tusk, and Arthur's getting spun on as well. Sutra is just dancing away, but he gets taken down as well. Now the Anti Mage is back with a vengeance, but he's getting critted up by this uh, Juggernaut. Now Bilal is the one that's getting taken down. Aegis getting popped. Their supports are down. Jive very low. He's trying to just TP away. Can they get him? No. The stun is there. As soon as he gets up, he got to be able to ball lightning out of here. He's not going to be able to win this fight. He has Hex up, though, if he gets jumped again. Can they chase him down? He has so many Bloodstone charges. Yeah. Oh, look at this giant creepway bottom lane. Swaps in the TP. He's going to be fine. So, again, SFU had 15k gold lead and still squandering it. They're losing these team fights. Mm hmm. Yeah, I. I don't like. I mean, well, it's okay. First of all, Crystal Maiden was channeling her alt under a Sentry Ward that was placed on top of the hill at the, uh, at the top of the jungle. They placed that to D Ward, and Crystal Maiden was channeling underneath it. So the Chain Frost was bouncing off her oh. over and over and over again. Uh, Storm Spirit went in, and then Chain Frost went on him. Annie Mage went in, and I think Annie Mage completely underestimated how much damage Washington had, especially when the Panthers were up, and he just got beat down standing on the break. Uh, as soon as Annie Mage went down, Storm Spirit probably should have taken off, but wanted to trade the Aegis for the Viper kill. Yeah, oh, they big ball lightning from Bilal, but he, yeah, can't get a kill. That's a lot of damage. Slightly intimidating, but that's about it. 26 stacks and then um, Bloodstone. Very confident in himself. Yeah. He's feeling good. As long as he doesn't uh, die, he is pretty much a raid boss right now. About to hit 25. What is he going for? Overlord, Overload pierces immunity. So he can pull a Juggernaut. Uh, overload is his uh, passive. Is his e. Oh, whoops. I'm not an extra Cortex, of course. Silly me. All right, okay. He's going to go uh 500 distance auto remnant and ball lightning and he's going to build a kaya and he's going to get a regen rune and he's yeah. going to cover the map that's when storm spirit gets now. nuts and he can clear lanes like no other as well oh yeah. he gets so hard to push against them yeah storm spirit very just one of probably one of the best late game heroes oh yeah one of the flashes is as well i mean definitely. all the spirits earth spirit ember spirit storm spirit all made to just style on your opponents definitely i love it especially earth spirit <laughs> and arguably Earth Spirit being uh, probably one of the hardest ones to play out of all three. Of course, all three has insanely high skill uh, cap as well. Yeah, anyone who plays Earth Spirit is probably a god of dope. <laughs> Enemy's about to get jumped. Oh, but... yeah. yeah the Juggernaut gets stunned. The, uh, the follow-up stuns are there. 4-3 only lands the Echo Slam on one. The, the Freezing Field in channel, no one's really inside it. That's where jumps in and blows up the Earth Spirit. They're going to go in. Oh, and he gets the Omni Slash on the Anti Mage. That is cool. That's where blinks in. Mimnetic now getting chased down. Bilal goes in. Very low health. He's risking it. No, he gets taken down by the blade mail. Oh, Medic. The Death Warrior trying to make a light illusion with his blinks, but he's not going to be able to do it. He actually can't man fight with all the gold adventures they have. They can't win. Meanwhile, on the other side, Catharsis dueling off Arthurix. Oh, he's so tanky as well. There we to go. Fire the Titan. Arthurix now. Yet. <laughs> is looking for more victims. Can he find the victims he's looking for? They're both very fast, but he does have that. Um, uh, the ultimate, the snowball's, snowball's, snowball's coming in, and of course, a shard is going to be able to stop him as well. World's Punch is available. Here comes the World's Punch. Can they get this kill? Yes, the sp Spirit Vessel more. is there as well. Arthrox now once more slow down onto Jive. No, he is going to not want to overextend there, and a very weird fight with a Omni Slash being cast by the AM. Yeah, poor, poor Static Tyrant. He just can't catch a break. 
and there's the 500 dis, uh, distance auto remnant and ball lightning picked up. Yeah, that fight was Storm Spirit win, and they almost took the Juggernaut out. Uh, and then the Echo Slam counter initiation by 403 once again hitting clutch stuns and setting his team up. After that, Arturix got left behind, and that was a lot of their farm. He, he took forever to kill the panda, because panda mm -hmm. alt had to end, and then he had to kill the panda. In the meantime, both his cores ran in and died. I love how Viper killed Storm Spirit with the blade mail and the, uh, um, the nether, toxin, nether toxin on the ground. Yeah. Just hilarious. Storm Spirit trying to do damage, and he made the same, gets stuck in. Doesn't realize that he might be huge, but against two cores, he's not huge enough. And then we go down to see Arterix just running around with full HP because he doesn't care. He's going for uh, Octarine Core. So he's going to be able to get Quill Spray, stacks up faster, and he's going to be getting healed from damage such as Radiance. So we do he's have the level 25 talent. On for, and below uh, as well. Bristleback? What does Bristleback have? Oh, so he's going to finish his Shivas. I think Bristleback's gonna go spell life seal because he's building Octarine and he's sending it out on the courier right now. Yeah, that would make sense. There's the Octarine finished. Yeah. Yeah, and spell life seal is good. Higher level than Annie Mage because of his talent. Very likely going for the Ice Shards cooldown. The Walrus Punch is just a ridiculously meme. <laughs> I mean, you need a lot of damage to make that worth it, right? And, well, you need to be hitting people a lot, too. Yeah. Dusk isn't really getting many auto attacks off at this point in the game. Yeah, definitely Dusk. like a BKB and a bunch of other items to augment that yeah. ability. Yeah, get the just the BKB Mask of Madness. Let's go. I love watching Storm Spirit just zip around and leaving his trail. Yeah, I mean, also the vision it provides also very underestimated as well. It's just a really good talent. Yeah. I don't know when you would ever take the other one. Yeah. And there's a chase going on. Arcturus doesn't care about anything at all. Oh, especially with he that Octarine core up. High. He is he is regening a lot of health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not too concerned about many things. Roshan? 46 still? gold illusions. One minute away from Roshan might respawn. So that's oh, what they did. Uh, Sword Spirit's getting a little deep though without his TM. Obviously he wants to look for some split push, but he wants this team to be pushing in more. Animage is going to take up top, so we're going to see Simon Fraser push all three lanes in at once. This is very smart. It's going to make Washington have to split their heroes up trying to defend all the lanes. And when Simon Fraser sees a weakness, they'll be able to initiate. And they can do a great job with that with heroes like Storm Spirit. Yeah. And a Blink CM. And a Blink Animage. Oh, that's where the game aggressive yet again. He's going to pay the price. Oh, he's taking so much damage. Oh, he dodges the Echo Slam just in time. Oh no, that would have been a kill. Arthurx now getting caught in here, but he is quite tanky. Although the break is there, but nice. Great Toss Snowball. Snowball is going to save that for now. Bilal zips in from very far away. Sutra channeling that freezing field. Now getting taken down by JV, uh, but he's going to be able to walk out. Bilal zips in, takes down the Viper. Hyper Rays now frontlining. Arthurx very low as well. There's a buyback from the Viper. Now there's a break and the. Uh, Bristleback not very tanky with the break on him, but he does run out. Oh my goodness, no one actually going down from the SFU side. Now Bilal jumps in, picks up another kill onto that uh, panda. The cow, rather. And they're going to get out all alive. Look at where Storm Spirit is. He's defending, he was not letting anyone get back to Fountain. Oh, but then also there is the Bloodthorn as well. The four stop and will be able to save the Juggernaut. Juggernaut finally goes down. And that might be the game. Yeah, GG gets called. They know all, they're going to be, uh, probably lose here just in general. And Mega Creeps at the very least. And Jive also getting taken down. Arturix yeah. returns again. Dropping to no health. Getting saved. Comes back with over half health. What a fun Bristleback game he must have had. I mean, and that's like the I, dream Bristleback game. You get to be a big man and stand in the front and everyone's just scared of you. Speaking of dreams, Washington has had their dreams of a spotless season crushed. <laughs> League of Ancients from Simon Fraser has put a loss on the board for Washington Dota. They now know what the defeat screen looks like. <laughs> First time ever losing. And I think I'm gonna. I have to give that MVP very clearly to Storm Spirit. Belial yeah. did work. He got a little too crazy sometimes, but for the most time, 
he was just the right amount of crazy, just the perfect amount. We even saw it that last fight, defending the throne, not letting anyone get in. Uh, af- I mean, after the Echo Slam was missed, uh, Simon Fraser was in a great position to take that fight. And then Artorix just did what he did best, ran around spamming W. Belial went into the back line and blew people up. And CM actually almost killed herself to the blade mail with Viper. But the thing about that is, is Viper uses blade mail on a CM instead of using it on uh, Storm Spirit. And uh, right as blade mail is about to go down, Storm Spirit goes in, kills the Viper. Echo Slam's already been used. What are you going to do, Washington? You're just going to lose your base and have to call GG. Yeah, I mean, as if you, I mean, you could tell the guys were having a lot of fun that game as well. Oh yeah. Uh, a lot of times, and they kind of like slipped up there, uh, and they probably took a lot of fights they shouldn't have, but it didn't really matter because they had the team calm to be able to make it in the late game, and they were constantly farming very well in between those failed team fights that they were oh, still yeah. staying on the top of net worth. You can see like the graph here, and the net worth didn't actually swing back and forth, even though they had a lot of uh, kind of losses in those yeah, team great. fights. That's you're completely correct with how um, Simon Fraser did a great job farming and Bristleback didn't end up just farming Ancients and being behind. He got a Radiance and after farming Heroes, he was farming Creeps, he was making space. Animage didn't even really get to use too much of the space because of how often he was fighting. And yeah. he was fighting so much because of uh, he just got so so large so fast behind a, a Bristleback that kind of just got to play single player and behind a Storm Spirit who was in, playing the hero insanely well. Uh, any mage has got to kind of be a battle mage, uh, and also the top lane or the the push, not the top lane, but the push from Simon Fraser happens so quickly and set them into a very strong position, followed by a Roshan. Simon Fraser was in control of the entire game. Uh, yeah, they're laning. It looked a little shaky, but they stayed in control the entire time. Yeah, their laning seems very powerful. At least in both the games we've seen, they have won their lanes, and of course the first one Washington came back. But this they time, know what they're doing in the lane yeah. phase. That is for sure, and I can't wait to see what they do in game three in the lanes. Yeah. All right, we'll send you guys to a break here. About five minutes until the next game. You go go get a drink of water. Go to the washroom if you need to, and we'll see you back in a few minutes. See you in a soon.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Hello. back to game three between University of Washington versus Simon Fraser University. This is game is tied at 1-1. One, one. We're going to game three. Let's see if Simon Fraser has what it takes to take down the undefeated University of Washington. Simon Fraser has what it takes in the laning phase, I'll tell you that much. And there's the Lich van. All right, <laughs> there's Byron. also the Bristleback van as well. I think that you, you you got. I always got to respect the respect bands. You're drafting for the series you're playing. Can't can't argue with that. And Artor, or Artorix. I mean, he demonstrated what that hero can do when he doesn't get shut down in lane. He just runs around, chases people down, and shoots quills at them. Lich, I'm happy to not see any more. <laughs> Honestly, I'm ready to see Tyrant second hero and a panda. Ooh. Cathar catharsis let's see what he has next yeah are we yeah. gonna see a six respect band draft or are we gonna see a huskar ban as well <laughs> there's definitely something with huskar right they've been respect banning huskar every single opportunity they got or at least mm -hmm. banning the supports anyways i'm ready to see the huskar pick there's oh, cm, CM okay. oh my goodness Four. CM? Four worth a ban bands. so tusk gonna get banned Let's, i don't know so what do you? How do you feel about the CM? Was the CM worth it last game? Um, I mean the CM, I think did well, but I think it was just mostly the um, it was Sutra who was playing. I think Sutra could have just played it as well on anyone else. I mean the CM was important that game because you had to bristle back on the team that needed the mana. You had the Storm Spirit that needed the mana. I don't think you know. Sutra could have done just as well on any hero, but of course, it was a, it was a, it was a pick for the team more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I actually really like the I like the CM that lane. I think yeah. it helped all the cores. And here we go. First pick. There's the Tusk. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's see it. So Clockwork and Omni Knight available for the first time in the series, which were banned first phase both times. Ooh. Ooh. First pick tied. The big fish again. And, oh, the snap picked out Huskar, 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 Huskar. Let's go. Maybe Tyrant Huskar. only knows how to play like Dazzle and Lich. Tyrant gets the heroes like we said last time. You bring, uh, can we please bring my little brother? <laughs> Dazzle and Lich. He'll cast Grave and Sacrifice. Old Dazzle, considerably harder hero to play than Lich. Definitely. Also more interesting to yeah. watch. Very much more interesting. Reserve time on pick number two, so it seems Simon Fraser's not entirely sure what they want to do this game. They do know they want a Tusk, though. Yeah. And reacting to a dazzled Titan clockwork. clockwork. There we go. All right, yeah. so these are two roaming fighting heroes right out the gate. So which one is going to be forced to position five? Is it going to be the Tusk? Double roam. Leave the safe lane alone. <laughs> Nobody buys words. Nobody buys courage. <laughs> oh, All right, who looks scarier between these two roaming heroes? Tusk with Clock. the giant glove and the, the big axe, or Clockwork with the little glove and the little weapon? I don't know, man. But Clockwork is a robot, though. He's like, Well, he's a guy in a robot suit. Oh, I guess that's true. But he looks like a robot. Like, if you if, yeah, I, if I met him and he like, like does like the robot dance while sliding on the floor, you know, his taunt, I would be afraid yeah. of that. I, I mean, he all has all a rocket on his back. You know, that, that guy's scary. I don't want to deal with any kind of Skynet issues. I think he might be more robot than man. And there's the Huskar ban. Oh, yep. boy. Okay, Washington, ruin our fun. <laughs> no, that was uh, Simon Fraser who banned Huskar. Oh, whoops. Come on, Simon Fraser. Let <laughs> us have our fun. Who's going to go for a ban, too? So, Anti-Mage is taken out. Silencer and Anti-Mage. Okay. And there's Juggernaut. Thank God. I'm done with Juggernaut, too. I'm happy with these bans so far. I don't know about you. Yeah, we're going to see a different team from uh, Washington this time. Because they've played the same team twice in a row. Of course, minus one hero difference. All right, second phase, not PL. Oh, Ooh, Medusa. Medusa. All right, now here comes PL from Simon Fraser. Yeah. PL, Anti-Mage. Oh, Anti-Mage, of course, banned. Excuse me. PL still available, as you said. Are right, they going to go for it? I don't know, though. PL seems weird with Tusk Clockwork. Yeah, all right. Very weird. I like the Medusa pick. What are they supposed to do? There was an Invoker ban earlier, so maybe there'll be an Invoker pick. That's one of the Medusa mm. counters. Yeah, there have been like early, like there was like first phase Invoker ban last time as well, so that might be a respect ban. Mm -hmm. Maybe. All right. Oh, okay, so it's a offlane Clockwork. Ah, cool, cool. I haven't seen that in a okay. little bit. 
Witch Doctor Clockwork, good combination. Also with Tusk as well, anyone that can keep people around the Death Ward, very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shallow Grave is actually really strong against Meldic though, and there's a Wisp, okay. Ooh, okay, Wisp Dusa. Okay, so it's a Pump Dusa full of heals and keep her safe is the game plan here for Washington. I like it, I like it. And oh, so what happens if, if Medusa split shots Wisp and Wisp has the talents, there's no way Wisp oh. hits all targets or does he i think it does if mazusa has a level 25 talent which applies like the attack modifiers to all of your split shots is more than just an attack modifier he's a <laughs> modifier. okay he's not just i was gonna say a piece of meat but he isn't he's not just a. uh i don't know what no he but is, I, think I think it works i think i've seen a meme on on reddit chat let me know if you, if you guys know if the split shot works with uh the io talent because that would be hilarious. Oh, I hope it does. I hope it is. He's got... I hope... I really hope. Oh my god. That's all I want. If that happens, you just win. You just let Washington win after that. Because that's too good. Trask speculates that it can't work. But Zay, Jay Viperson says confidently oh. that it does work. And they run it all the time. Tarask is a known hater. I wouldn't listen to him. Uh, he, that is very true. Tarask, Tarask is a doubter. He doesn't believe in dreams. All right, so that's some intellect steal against a mana shield. I like it. Yep. That's some damage against squishy heroes like Dazzle and Wisp. Also, ulti and, drains mana as well. And uh, Tidehunter is a strength hero, so he's not going to enjoy having his intellect stolen. Uh, all right, we're going back. Terrorblade band. Ooh, I love that hero. Just kidding. And last <laughs> band of the game. We're looking for a position one for Washington. That's going to wisp, work with a Wisp, a Dusa, and a Dazzle. Yeah. Probably something melee. Both sides looking for a one here. But they don't want to die to Clockwork and Tusk. Why Very much true. What do you well, think PL about... Was the pool for, for Simon Fraser? Yes, PL was in the pool for Simon Fraser. He still is in the pool as well. PL seems still good. One of yeah. A great Medusa cancel, uh, counter because of how much mana he drains. Going into reserve time, too. They're not sure what they think Washington wants to pick. I don't know what Washington wants to pick, either. Yeah, still playing on time. What do you think about, like, Chaos Knight for Washington? So Chaos Knight count... Uh, no, well, Chaos Knight actually works really well, because he combos with Io, yeah. and he combos with Dazzle Heal. I mean, not yeah. the scariest combo in the world, but Reality Rift with Alt, with Phantasm sets up Dazzle Heal Bomb. Uh, it's going to offer more control. He's a tanky frontliner. I'm concerned. Well, I was going to say he might soak up too much farm, but mm. Chaos Knight isn't known for farming. Yeah. He's, he comes online early, so he'll make space for. Uh, he'll make space for Medusa. And PL is banned. Chaos Knight doesn't seem bad at all. There's Spectre. Okay. Interesting. Spectre. Wow. Doesn't okay. I mean, that's a Diffusal Builder at the very least. Mm -hmm. But not really a Medusa killer, though. It, it, Spectre will be able to gank with Clockwork, though, and Tusk being able mm, to get True, range. true. Uh, Spectre's really slow, though, and Medusa is also really slow. And when they both come online, I don't know, both are really scary late game. <laughs> Sparta, so Sparta Man in the chat, memeing up about League of Legends. <laughs> oh boy. He's calling all these heroes by the League names. <laughs> and also Overwatch, like, they call Tusk uh, Roadhog. Oh, I mean, he also has a hook as well, actually mentioning it. Let's keep this. <laughs> let's just keep talking about uh, games that are good. So, <laughs> well, we're going to Washington's last pick. Uh, you were saying CK. I say CK could work. What about yeah. Tiny? Oh, Tiny against OD seems a little crazy. And against Clark. No, 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 no. They're not taking Tiny. They're definitely not taking Tiny. I like how Witch Doctor was picked up before the IO. Witch Doctor, because Witch Doctor does kind of counter IO with the cat esque the right. coconut. Uh, after a relocate. I feel like Washington came into this game with a uh, Medusa IO draft in mind. Definitely. And they may have came into this game with that in mind, but they did not come into this game with a last pick in mind. Still making us wait. I mean, they had two minutes of reserve time, so they're going to use it. <laughs> I guess so. Just taking uh, this time to talk about it, I guess. What, what other things, what other um, safe lanes are available right now? 
I'm just trying to think what they might want to go for. I PL doesn't seem right. Uh, PL well, was even banned. banned. Yeah. yeah. CK is still available. Um, there aren't a lot. There's a lot of version one banned already. Hmm. They. So we need someone who doesn't take farm. Probably someone with control as well. No idea. I want to know. Please. Oh my oh, God. Ricky. Core Ricky Maru. Ricky. Ricky. Right. That's 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 core Ricky, boys. I don't I, I I don't know how I feel about that. I haven't seen a core Ricky in a very long uh, time. I mean, he's gonna be able to smoke cloud on top of cogs. He's gonna be able to smoke cloud on top of snowball. Smoke cloud on top of death ward. He's yep. gonna get countered by the specter. Um. Also, and... OD does a pretty good job as well, saving people well, who's building smoke. Yeah, and OD's building Hurricane Pike, 100%. Yep. I'm so... sure Witch Doctor is going to build Force Staff as well to help. So, I think Ricky might have a hard time. I, Ricky's not going to scale against a Spectre. Um... Wait. 403 is on the Ricky. Okay, so yeah, unless there's a position and Jive switch, is on the IO. <gasps> it's a mid IO. Woo! Okay, I mean he needs to get to level twenty for a talent, right? <laughs> okay, we're doing it, boys. Let's go. All right, so over on the SFU side, we have Bilal playing the OD. We have Sutra playing the Witch Doctor. Over on the clockwork, we have Arthrox. We have Hyper Rays on the Tusk yet again. And finally, Death Ward on the Spectre. Thank you very, very much for giving me the dire. <laughs> I have 403, the Fisher. The man himself with the stuns, playing a hero with no stuns, Ricky Maru, running around looking to rip pockets and snatch jewels. Meme. Tick on Medusa, going to be played in the safe lane, not mid. Catharsis doesn't get his panda, but he gets his big fish Tidehunter. Static Tyrant, the most lovable man in Dota, playing Dazzle, one of the most lovable heroes. And Jive, going mid on a support hero. For whatever reason, we're going to see a mid Wisp. I haven't seen one of these in a long time, and I'm excited to see what they do with it. But I'm more excited for level 20. Attack Tethered Allies Target. Yes, please. That is what I want to see. Apparently, that just works on every split shot target, even without the level twenty-five talent on Dusa. Woo! Okay, I'm ready for this. I'm I'm loving. I got. I have to. Absolutely, I got to go for the Wisp Medusa strategy. How do I not? Can four three steal the rune? Four three steals the rune. But yes, the other side is also rune taken as well. So still a two for two trade. Good job, four three, keeping it even. I like it. I like it. Alright, I'm going for Washington. <laughs> I'm going for Washington. You gotta go for Washington. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 with, a, with a meme draft like this, how can you how can you hate him? <laughs> Taras says uh, this is too meme dense for him, being our <laughs> resident hater, obviously. Of course, of course. But it's apparently, uh, Washington's motto is "We are meme dense." So, there you go. Oh gosh, I don't know if I can cheer for them anymore. <laughs> And trading blows bottom. Ten tangos here for Tidehunter, so a lot of regen uh, for them to chew through. Pro three just gets hit by a cog while he's poor guy. <laughs> they take a loss on the cogs though. Money, money. And I guess uh, is is mid lane gonna be the one we want to keep our eyes on? Even farm right now, three three. Yeah, just all these lanes seem with. pretty slow. Uh, Catharsis well, might be in a little bit of trouble, but he's a tanky boy. Bro He's going to walk himself out. Cogs. Bro 3 has no need for his mana. He has a passive. So he just takes <laughs> cogs every time. Yeah, he has two passives he can level. Actually, no, never has... mind. You can't level two passives anymore. 403 is two CS and they're both cogs. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's how supports make money, you know? That's a, that, that he's got to watch BSJ stream. Every time I watch BSJ stream, every time Clockwork hits Cogs, he Oh, there's shards on to Tidehunter, also Melodic as well. Now he's going to walk out. He's going to walk around the Is shards. Oh, Melodic? I think he clicks on the minimap. No, he actually just trying to get the Melodic creeps to follow him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wants uh, to Easy XP. Here. He 
misses the connect though, so he has to farm them under tower. Yeah, slow down by the uh, shard. Oh, middle lane now. Oh my goodness, someone goes from behind, and then uh, Jive's gonna be able to take that. First there blood, the great gank. Oh my, that's so crazy. The 4 3 comes from behind, which gives Zive the tether target, which lets him get the full spirits off. That's insane. That is brilliant. Do that with, with the Ricky Mario, too, they can do that over and over and over again. Yeah, th this entry isn't going to do anything in the mid lane. Uh, meanwhile, top, that gave Arthur the open for the solo kill onto the Dusa. Oh, that feels good. Arthur showing he knows what he's doing in the off lane once again. Yeah. As soon as Ricky was gone, he knew it was his time to go. I'm ready for Ricky to get his third CS. I hope it's a cog. Oh, Arthur needs to slow down right now. Poison touched up. Backstab down. Oh, 4 3 wants the cogs. He's not going to nope. get it this time. <laughs> Darn it. I think Tyrant got one, though. Tyrant Hunter just getting harassed by the level 1. Oh, double damage on Witch Doctor. Though. Ooh, that hurts. 120 damage 120. per right click. And... Ooh, Mimtek actually not getting the snake bounces over onto the range creep, so he's going to lose the mana on that one. Arthur's going for a very aggressive build. Uh, Barry Assault uh, going first. No Rocket Flare. Artrix wants to fight. He doesn't want to farm, and I got to respect that. Yeah, I can respect that too. Also making a much more uh, a potent ganker as well once he gets his level 6. Catharsis is playing up, and Tusk is coming from behind. You gonna see a kill? No. Nope. And we have someone rotating. Ricky's rotating mid, so we'll have to keep our eye on the wisp because he's gonna yeah. make a slick play again soon. Probably S next time he has his uh, spirits up. Five seconds until that. The ward in the middle sentry is not gonna see four or three just yet. Yeah, they're going to wait for this lane to push out a little bit more. They're all playing safe. Oh, they might win the, the four minute rune if it's top. I bet you they'll get OD. Oh yeah. Although, yeah, there's no wards on the, any of the rune spots right now. What is that? It's going to be illusion rune top. Oh, no one cares about that. 4 3 is spotted by a sentry finally. Okay, sentry gets taken down though. That... Uh oh. Odie knows he's in trouble. Yeah. So that's going to force him. Oh, might get a kill. Oh, he doesn't have enough mana. Radiance top tower is under attack. Oh, they go. Watch out, be a little bit careful leaving Meme Tech on top lane by himself. Uh oh. So Wish Doctor misses Meldict. His level 2 Meldict he missed. Oh, that's sad. I mean, it's a slightly <laughs> awkward spell to land. Yeah, it is. What? Oh, poor guy. Oh, he Hyper Raid. Showing up mid as well to give some protection to the OD. Mm -hmm. They know something's up. Yeah. Now. Wisp is almost level 5, maybe they'll make a move when he gets 5, level 3 spirits. That's a lot of damage. In the meantime, oh, Medusa's getting chased down again. Yeah, but the uh, Dazzle is there. He has no point in Grave. Actually, Meme Tech is going to go down. Arthrax, another solo kill over oh, onto the safe lane. Gosh. Uh, this clockwork is going to be scary. Witch Doctor reports in just in time for the XP. And we'll say 4 3, they'll attempt to gank into mid, but they were unsuccessful. Bilal playing that safe. Yeah, it's so hard to last against the uh, uh, Wisp as well because he just pops the spirits and keep them in the max range and you gotta walk through all that damage to be able to gain the last hit range. Mm -hmm. So Wisp has gotta go 60 damage at level 10 this game, right? Oh yeah, obviously. What else does he have? 400 max spirit, uh, yeah, definitely the damage. Yeah. It's not 60 on level 10? It's crazy. Yeah. So Medusa just gets a relic when Wisp gets 20. Yeah, how much is Relic worth? Like That's uh, 60 damage, yeah, you're right. right. That's exactly 3,800 gold worth of talent. 3,800, yeah. <laughs> 3,800 gold talent. Hello. And the Wis and Wisp is already quartered there. Mid. Not actually quartered, but... Oh, Ricky found a friend! Yeah, he's gonna get slowed. There is going to be the Orb of Venom. Can he find more damage though? No, he's gonna take a lot of harass there. That's a Blink Strike as well. He's gonna lose about half health for three. Keep chasing, probably chase him around till down to the tower. Unless his team actually wants to dive, Mimtik is here as well. His snake has cancelled, throws a snake. Oh no, there's not enough bounce to get onto Sutra now, Arthurx. Turning his attention, he is bloodthirsty clockwork, but he has no mana for the cogs. Oh, the actually, the uh, coconut actually bounces to the other side. Tyrant, no mana to TP out, so he's gonna sacrifice himself, trying to distract them as much as they can. So it almost goes down to Ricky, but Ricky's gonna be fine. Do they have any detection on these heroes? No detection, so Ricky's gonna be fine. 
if if our Turks had mana, they might have been able to go for the Medusa with a snowball. Yeah. But I think getting the Dazzle is the best they could get there, and they made the right call. Oh, three CS now on Ricky. Maybe he got another cog. Ooh. Also mid lane, 403, looking to set something yeah. up in Bilal. I want to see it. Drive setting past it up the here. spirits. 403 comes in, and there's the tether. Oh, but the banish is there. The silence to follow. Sounds a little bit too slow on that one. That's so much damage, though. Yeah. Like, Odie can't stay in lane. It's over half his oh, life. Oh, but Hyper Ray's being a bro. Oh. oh, the dodge. Missing hook shot. That's what I like yeah. to see. First hook shot being missed. Hyper Ray's, of course, brought out a cell for his buddy Bilal. So Bilal's going to be A-OK. -okay. Check out uh, Io's boots. Don't see that every day. Phase boots, Io. I mean, I guess he's trying to load up on as much damage as possible for the combo. Oh. 403 finds the Witch Doctor, but of course, not much he can do right now. Top oh, lane, Arthur X finds Tyrant again. Tyrant obviously can't TP out with a the Clockwork juke. in his face. Oh, oh. nice round of Jukes, but apparently, <laughs> Clockwork has like extendo arms on his robot robot arms. Bill to pick that up from very far away. I think Tyrant could have tangoed up to his tower actually there and potentially got away. Oh, yeah, he has tango still oh, available. Ooh, missing that kill. Yeah, he's diving real deep. Looks like uh, I'm also Spectre. Must have been low for to something that aggressive to support Sergo and be it there. Like he to was trying to creep cut and play around with Ricky. Ah. But Ricky doesn't really offer much. Ricky is an orb of venom. <laughs> yeah. Barely that's any damage point. at this point. Some silence as well, but that's it. Yeah. Oh, haste on Blal. He's oh, going to go after go. Uh, middle here. The IO getting caught. The Tyrant is here the with banish. the Grave actually on cooldown. If Bilal die. knew, oh no, the ulti isn't going to do any damage, but Hyper Ray is coming in to clean it up. 4 3 now here as well. It just initiates a TP and there's nothing Silence. these supports can do. <laughs> throws a smoke bomb at him. Please don't go. Trust me, we won't be your friends. We won't kill you. Now Spectre, who's already top CS by 14, has a free lane. Now, oh, Tidehunter's back. Tidehunter not as effective as he was against the Juggernaut. Spectre doesn't really seem to care. No, Spectre that's straight a for the good radiance. spell. Mm -hmm. And how's Medusa doing? Second on farm though, still behind Spectre. I want to see more Wisp combos. I think that's hilarious. I love that. Just the Wisp tether into all the spirits. Ricky yeah. sneaked on top, but Ricky has no mana. I think he also got pinged out. Yeah, there was a ping for sure. It was a pink ping, so it could have been Aya or it could have been Clockwork. Okay. Didn't exactly see who it was. And just back to the mid lane, or just smack people. 403 is back. Are we going to see a combo? Tusk is nearby with dust this time. Yeah, and Bilal is Jive pushed is in. ready. Oh, here we go, here we go. So we oh, need to not... Oh, this... no, he's on the wrong side. Missed the kind of coordination there, but he does get out of the smoke cloud, yeah, and... There is the imprisonment. The Jive taking a lot of damage from overloading himself during that Tusk time. Is here. Yeah, the roll in, but Jive is very far away and he's quite fast with his face boots, but the oh my god, the haunt in as there. well from Death World. But Jive, very tanky, and he actually relocates out and well, actually no, he comes back. I'm actually confused what happened there. That's where not getting chased down very low, but the stick is there. Hyper race, can he get out? There's imprisonment over on the tyrant as well. He has no mana left to be able to do anything. But a huge ravage catches two, there four, threes will be able to help the uh, to take that. And now 403 taking a lot of damage. He goes invisible. They still have no detection here. A rocket flare was able to take down that dazzle. <laughs> Jeez, that ravage. I mean, that was a big. That was a. That was a big boy. Yeah. I can't. I. I. Yeah. So. So. Io relocated. Beside himself is what happened there. Oh, that's what <laughs> happened. I think he relocated yeah. away, and it's just like, what's going on? I like, I yeah. really tripped out. <laughs> Oh, hookshot oh, into hookshot. the mid lane, very aggressive under the tower. It is a tide hunter. He's got silenced up by the smoke cloud. I was always also here to be able to give him the overload as well. Now the Witch Doctor is oh one getting gosh. chased down. They turn their attention on Arthrax. Karthus uh, has the Melodic on him and a blade mail already complete on the clockwork. He is not afraid of anything. Goes after uh, Karthrax. The uh, Melodic duration is over. Oh my god, he is just tanking three people. Death War gets dropped. Doesn't really do much. Actually, he's going to do some damage, but that smoke cloud is going to be able to cancel before it does too much more. Tyrant's gonna get up. 403 very low. Heal bomb coming out to save him. Oh my goodness, that shallow grave actually saves 403. He's going for more. Oh, he backs up. What is he doing? The coconut is not going to be in buying strange of Maledict. He actually Oh no, heal bomb. He's gonna be okay. There it is. Ar Archer I love Archer just dives the tide hunter under tower before uh, at eleven and a half minutes. Like he died, but 
that's just aggressive. That's yeah. what you want from your clockwork player, from your offlane player. That's a ballsy space creating move. <laughs> he, he went out and went back in. <laughs> the guy did it twice. But that is an uh, insanely early blade mail. He's going after a meme tick again. He gets his mana drained a little bit, but meme tick is amongst his creeps right now. Oh, and a heal bomb is huge. Arthrex now has to show himself out. Oh no, the defensive hook shot misses. He's not going to pop his uh, blade mail. Pops it finally, but it doesn't do that much damage. He's just going to give the kill to meme tick. Well, that's what they need. Yeah. Is getting getting reduced to kills is a huge deal because of how uh, she scales late into the game. Um, so any farm she can get when she's weak is a huge deal because eventually she's going to be huge. Great heal bomb there from Tyrant as well. Great recognition. Radiant structures are fortified. Uh, actually, we're I think having some technical difficulties with the stream. Uh, I'll be yeah, just right back crazy. in about uh, 30 seconds. Don't go anywhere. Let's just give me one second to fix this. All right, sorry about uh, oh, sorry We're about back. that. We had some issues with uh, somewhat the games right now, but we got that fixed up. We relaunched Dota, and everything is a okay. We haven't missed any action, I believe. No kills went down. Everyone just kind of farming in their lanes. You, you, no matter what happens to try and stop us from watching collegiate Dota, we're not going to stop. <laughs> we're not going to stop delivering you Division Two collegiate Dota action mid wit ever, and that is a promise. Very true. And there is finally a shards coming out on Cathar's play. He takes no damage. Level 4 Kraken shell. Hyper Race tries to crack that shell, but he takes absolutely no damage. I love the the max Kraken shell, max anchor smash. It's, it's just so much fun to watch because it's like, it's just he just does whatever. Who yeah. cares? Goes around, anchor smashes heroes, anchor smashes creeps. He's so tanky. Tusk is going to come in and try and do something. Wish Doctor's here too. Yep, there is a coconut. The coconut is going to bounce. There's a Malik as well, and great shards. Oh no, but there is a great combo of Ricky's uh, <laughs> Cloak and Shadows, and I'm um, uh, with the Ravage. That's we're now getting slowed down with the level 1 uh, tight Q, and now that's where he's going to get himself out, but the relocate actually relocates High Hunter back to the mid lane. Not what he wanted. But the oh, gets actually, a ulti used by Deathward actually kills Mimtic in the top lane. Oh my god. Action happening everywhere. The this global presence of Spectre is insane, especially with Clockwork, who who's a very fast yeah. hero. Clockwork, speaking of, going after Tyrant right now in the bottom lane. He has no life right now. He used a grave. Actually gets out for now. Arthur's no mana at the same time. No flare coming Tyrant. out for flare missed. Great Tyrant. juke for static. Is the man Tyrant's Tyrant, you play Dazzler, keep people alive. Tyrant just showing he doesn't even need Shallow Grave. He just dodges, just walks away from explosions, doesn't even look back. I love that. And uh, so as I was saying, the Clockwork Fast Hero, large solo kill potential, and Spectre being able to haunt in is just uh, icing on the cake. It's overkill in most scenarios. Now, do you think Spectre should get a Diffusal Blade against the Medusa? I mean, that's what he usually goes for, right? After... The Radiance, unless he needs a defensive item. I actually haven't seen Spectre in a very long time, though. He's not um, as common. Jivy gets uh, Melodicted up right now, but there is a Shallow Grave to keep him alive for now. There is a big uh, uh, Dazzle ult as well. Here comes the Witch Doctor ultimate, but the Banish from the OD is going to actually secure the kill for himself. 403, wondering what he can do right now. Not much is the answer. Actually, Catharsis coming in 403 could help with the skill, at least with some body blocks. He's playing it very careful here. The body blocks are not going to be there for the time being. 403 Man, is just the ward. I also love how there's the Ribitar uh, Death Ward. It's such a good cosmetic. Yeah. And he there's has a monkey a on his back frog. as well. 
Just all the he's animals. Got, he's got exactly what he needs. Uh, looking at items, we have Yasha picked up on Medusa, which I love. Very cheap, great for agility heroes, helps them farm, helps them fight, helps them move around. Love it. Spectre's going for Radiance, which is standard. It looks like, so actually, as I say, that Relic is picked up by Spectre, and Spectre's halfway to Radiance. So we're going to see a very quick Radiance, actually, yeah. I believe. What else does he have? Phase Boots and Aquila? Yeah, that's fine timing. How is our little Ricky doing? It seems like she's been having issues. Ricky's going to go straight in for the Fusal. I like Ricky getting um, the Fusal because it's just a humongous power spike from tons of damage. The agility multiplies. He gets the mana burn. He gets the purge so he can keep people in smoke cloud. And also, it, Ricky kind of a hero that if he doesn't scale into a late game, he doesn't really do much in the late game at all. It's, it's kind of like you know a hero that plays similar to Bounty Hunter in the early phase, but in the late game they play completely different. They're gonna kill this. They're gonna kill Switch Doctor with Wisp, I think. But Clockwork's there. Yeah, you gotta watch out. Clockwork is quite scary. Quite. They fed. know Ricky's bottom. Um, rather. Simon Fraser knows Ricky's Oh, well. yeah. Sutra now getting gone on right now. Pops the dust, and it's probably going to go down with one more right click coming out. Oh, Catharsis there. taking that kill. Yeah, Ricky doing what he oh, needs Clockwork to do. Wants to go. In the meantime, Medusa's just pushing out top lane. Yeah. Much needed space for her. Doing quite well in the farm department. 7,600 net worth right now for her. Spectre also going for arguably quite a greedy build. Usually I, I see Spectre stopping for an urn of um, urn of shadows, but deciding to go for the raw uh, radiance rush after the uh, radiance boots. can carry a game though. So for I think, sure. Oh, look at top oh yeah, there's a hook shot in. Um, Mimtek still has his Giant. ulti if he wants to pop it. He pops the ulti right now, preventing the Spectre from uh, jumping in onto the Han. Uh, Gen V also coming in as well. Bilal now will be in big trouble. The imprisonment ends on the clockwork. He's out in the open, but he is very tanky right now. Tyrant with the preemptive grave is going to push Arthrax off of himself, and Karthas is going to be able to take that. 4 3 now slowing down a hy hyper race. He has a snowball for a time being. He actually has a vision over onto the wolves from that's worth farming it but now spectre might be in trouble big oh, ravage lands no. on both of them and now that's we're not having the ulti as well use that earlier but there is a dagger to be able to get out jumps back in jumps back out and he's walking back and forth trying to juke there was the death were committed to take take that um tide hunter as we're still juking around back and forth he makes it out into the jungle side um 4-3 actually goes on, I'm assuming from the maledict and yep. the snake coming out a great delta split from them is going to keep the spectre safe that was insane. So uh, I think as soon as uh, Medusa forced off the way into the shrine, we should have seen Simon Fraser back. That was very greedy, continuing to chase. Following up, our boy 403 once again has a slow start, but uses his skills extremely well. Yeah. Uh, right in the choke point before the shrine, he drops the smoke bomb. Clockworks, silence, and Odie has to get silence to get into the fight. Clockwork gets banished. Odie gets chased down by Wisp, beaten down. That's a mid Wisp, not a support with an armlet. I'd like to add. <laughs> uh, beats down the Odie and returns to the fight where uh, Washington gets picked off one by one until Witch Doctor can come in and kind of buy some space for Spectre to get out alive. Overall, though, definitely Washington is quite happy with how that went. Yeah. Good thing Spectre didn't die though. Yeah, and the great jukes from him, just going back and forth in that impassable terrain. Keeping himself out of vision. It was very uh, close to dying to the Ravage. So how much damage? Wisp actually gets a ton of damage. Because remember, Wisp is a strength hero. Yep. So when Wisp is armlet, has level 20, and has armlet, like he, Wisp is going to add a serious amount of damage. Following that up... Uh, oh, he's going for Desolator, Desolator as well. Oh, of Crazy. course. Of course. And then that helps Medusa so much. Oh, uh, Catharsis gets fun for Arthrax. He's just going to walk him down with the battery assault. He pops the hood, so he's not taking a lot of damage for now. He can't get any auto attacks up because the attack's so slow. Hookshot just for the damage. Oh, and the save there is for me from a jive. Uh, they break the tether. He's going to come back, but um, now Artrex might be in a little bit of trouble. The relocate back is going to happen in one second, and he comes back and no real contested. Spotted. And then we have 403 gets spotted by a sentry ward. He is maledicted as well. He had no way he's going to survive that. Nice. Did he have smoke bomb up there? Maybe. Yeah, he could have. I he was up. He just kind of panicked five and seconds, started running away. Five seconds until Haunt and Ricky's dead. It would not be surprised to see uh, to see Simon Fraser try and make a move right now. 
yeah, the Radiance is up as well. So, you know, this poor Dazzle is going to burn up to the Radiance quite fast. Only 900 health on that hero. OD went for Midas, which is the classic build. It's not as common anymore, but OD. Uh, as much as OD does a lot of single target damage, still isn't the fastest farming hero in the game. Part of it because he wants to have intellect stolen and you don't steal intellect from creeps. Um, Tidehunter has Blink, has Hood of Defiance, and Tidehunter is actually going for Agonims, stacking on top of the Desolator. <laughs> Wisp is going to be AoE split shutting on everybody. I love that. That's fun. You don't yeah, and there's also the Weave actually. as well. Yep, there's also the Weave. I love it. This is a plan. Washington has a plan this game. They knew what they were doing with this draft. This isn't a fluke. This is very well thought out. Let's see how well they can execute it. Ricky's still a ways away from Diffusal, having a very hard time farming. Only 5 CS. Probably 3 of those are cogs. Yeah, obviously Ricky doesn't really jungle quite well. Oh, no, Arthur is with the Invisoon, yeah. Spectre's Haunt is up as well, so he can oh, get help yes. instantaneously. Oh, actually, let's him go. He doesn't want to fight until his shrine, I'm guessing. Yeah, he just lets him go. Yeah, so Medusa gets tanky. insane heal on top of the shrine, because she's turning mana into health as well. Yeah. So playing it patiently, Arthur still has a invis, walks by Jive. Is hunting Jive he now. To, but he can't kill the Wisp. He whispers tethers away. Oh, yeah, he's trying to go okay, for it right now, it. but as you say, he just he's walks up into the shrine. Yeah, Arthur is now getting slowed down. Oh, <laughs> Cogs plus a uh, shards there is going to stop him for now. Four or three silences and tells him he's here. And then backs off. All that. Haunt is still up. Medusa and Spectre face off top, the two late game monsters. Yeah. Two I'm of the heart carries. I'm assuming things are gonna slow down quite a bit here until the IO hits level twenty. And IO is very happy with that. That is an insane power spike for Washington. So yeah. they have no problem waiting that out. In the meantime, IO's farming up a desolator. Medusa's taking the game late. Oh, Io can also get Tether Grant's uh, Scepter Bonus level 15, which gives Medusa the Stone Form on the Snake, which increases God, damage of right clicks on top of all the minus armor they already have. Oh boy, we're in for a treat. Man, that, that, that's Orgy. so much just meaning. Count down, count down till, till Nuclear War, aka Io 20. Yeah. So I'm assuming he's going to take the town. Otherwise, he can take the plus 90 uh, Spirit Hero Damage, which actually is quite a bit of damage, so. Uh, it's arguable both ways. Um, what other no, things? No, no way. No way you do spirit hero damage. Yeah. Dazzle's Agonims is very janky as well. It gives him an AoE uh, grave, which is rarely ever useful. This is so silly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's yeah, a scepter. This is actually kind of fun, but it's not really anywhere near as good. Medusa Agonims is insane. What does Rookie's Agonims do again? He, he lets his uh, tricks to the trade. Oh, pocket wiki. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, here we go. There's a witch doctor spotted oh, out. Oh, he gets smoked right away. Double damage on so, Medusa. Oh my god, the damage is huge. 4 or 3 gets stunned up. You got trick out trade. Yeah, he tricks out trade to yeah. well save himself. So try gets out though. But the cog is on top of him. But no detection on this clockwork. So 4 or 3 is going to be a okay. Another Meanwhile, Spectre takes the top for the trade. Fair enough. It looks like they just want to push down mid, get some map control, defend Roshan, or make it harder Snake for... Snake going out. Oh yeah, Roshan. Snake now turns people into stone, by the way. God, that's insane. Are they going to be able to take the second tower right now? They have all their spells except for tricks, which isn't that big of a deal. Yeah. Bilal also quite low on mana. Gonna head back right now. Yeah, they're going to take off. Scotty. Going for Medusa. What's Medusa get at level 20? 800 mana. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good one. Definitely. <laughs> so much mana. And like, oh my god, can you, is the Scotty on top of Desolator if Io was tethering him? That's crazy. I'm so excited. Please. Only five more levels. And this, this game is just a waiting game. It's like I'm waiting just, to open your uh, Christmas present. It's uh, Yeah, like that's such a clear win condition is IO getting 20 that it's the game completely changes the second IO gets 20 We're in a completely different game of Dota And I want to see I want to be there now. I want to be part of the future. Yeah, look at this wraparound Four Players or three scouting them out. Yeah, 
There's a backstab. Ooh, courier Radiant kill. Courier gets taken down by 403. Great Courier Snipe. He actually gets hit by the dust right now, gets slowed. A Haunt also being used to try to chase him down. Arthrex also on the Medusa. They chase him down. Uh, Jive is also there to be able to help him out. The heal and actually the overcharge is going to be enough to be able to take that down. The combo doing what they need to do and the... Relocate back will go on to top. That means that's where he's gonna go in for the dagger. Now they have a one v one. Yeah, this is not the one v one you're looking for, Medusa. He's getting slow, losing all of the mana from the. Uh, does he have a talent for? No, actually, just losing mana because oh, yeah, obviously he has yeah. mana shield though. Yeah. Yeah, that relocate back oh, was Spectre. tragic. Spectre, actually, speaking of the big level twenty, Spectre level twenty two. After all that, going very well, and. Medusa may get 800 health, but Spectre, or 800 mana, but Spectre gets 500 health. Yeah, seems pretty good. Mm -hmm, especially with Dispersion. So, just like that, Simon Fraser's back in the game. I've been waiting for this Wisp, but we can't count Simon Fraser out. Yeah. Obviously, there is uh, that's a weakness of uh, the Wisp mid, because, I mean, it's not a very strong core, to say the least. 4 3, now getting gone on a great Ravage, we'll be able to get 3. Do they have the damage to follow up? Sutra barely gets out alive. Oh my goodness, there's a huge no. hammer being dropped on top of the head of Ricky. Tyrant graves himself, gets body blocked so by the like creeps, and then the imprisonment is going to be enough to kill him as soon as he drops out of that. Clockwork wants to go still, I think. Oh, Catharsis jumping in with the gush. But the damage is there from below. Bro, there's so much intelligence storm. 68, 72 intelligence storm. Why oh. are you jumping in on this man? They just need to get to level 20, but they're too antsy. Yeah, top wait. lane also. That's where, meanwhile, just pushing this tier 3. Oh, buyback also had to be committed from the IO. You don't want to see that coming out from your mid this early. The stone form is there for uh, that's where he gets slowed, but that's not enough to take him down. Spectre's quite fast. Now mid lane being pushed in as well. They'll be able to defend this. Oh, more more mana being stolen from from Bilal. 76, 76. intellect stolen. Oh yeah, our world of our kind of wants to fight, but he knows not to. Yeah. Then the aggressive wards from Washington don't help when the enemy's right at your doorstep. They have vision of behind a T2. They have vision of people farming ancients and jungle camps, but where the fight actually is is on their side of the river. I think. Once again, they overextended, like we've seen in games past. They got a little too cocky, and they get punished for it from Simon Fraser, a very capable team, proven that every single game so far. Prove it once again. 403 also feels so weak. He almost has his weapon, his defusal, and, and that's going to help him out a lot. But right now, he kind of is just a smoke cloud in a ward. Yeah. Even the radiance is just ripping him right up. So squishy. Only 1,000 health right now. Drops the smoke to be able to get make the mist or some of their auto attacks, but yeah, it's I mean just delaying right now. While meanwhile, Jive is desperately trying to hit that level twenty, level seventeen right now. Another tome coming up in thirty seconds. Definitely will want to pick that up. I don't think that's going to get him to level twenty just yet. No, not yet. But that's where this coming high ground is going to turn to meme tech. But there is a stone gaze coming out uh, that forced them everyone to there. be away. Oh, Jive, no, he relocated to the wrong spot. Oh, Spirit hitting level 20. You're not going to be able to hit level 20 while you're no. dead. Jive, we need you alive. Oh, where did they relocate to? I mean, obviously and from behind them. Haunt is still up. Do every alt is down. Oh, no, this could be a set of racks. Yeah, that's worth going in aggressively. No mana on him, but he is very tanky. Tyrant being chased down. Uh, now Catharsis getting gone on. He actually has a melody. He'll take down from that for sure. That's where now actually going down. Getting a little bit too aggressive there maybe. Bilal finds the kill onto Ricky with the final Arcane Orb. Now jumping on to that Medusa. And Arcane Orbs are hitting really hard. 40 intelligence stolen. 44. 48. One more hit will do it. But Mimtic barely gets out of there. That, yeah, so Simon Fraser kind of just walked up like they owned the place when none of the ultimate spells are up by Washington. Pretty easy. A great smoke cloud actually immediately cancelled Witch Doctor Alt, hitting, I think, three players. But yeah. Spectre goes down in exchange for almost all of Washington, and we're going to see a T3. Shrines are now exposed, also making Roshan an easy objective. Roshan's an objective uh, Washington really wants because uh, for the XP and for the Aegis, trying to get Wisp to 20 still. There we go, melee racks, range of racks will fall as well, and that's a whole lane. Now, top lane, the tier 3 tower is at less than half health. I don't think it's going to go down now, but Simon Fraser has an easy second lane, uh, an easy-ish, easier second lane to go for. Yeah. I was 
comes back out as a team. That's five. Very disciplined Dota. So it looks like next item for Jive is going to be a Mask of Madness. It's slightly late for a Mask of Madness, but I have no idea how to build a uh, carry IO. Yeah, uh, I've seen the armlet on carry IO. I've seen the Desolator with the level 20 talent. I, I don't. I'm not feeling the Mask of Madness just because I think IO's role is strongly going to be around just stay alive. He's already yes. quite squishy as well. Yeah, he has. He already has Tether Grant Scepter bonus. He's gonna have Armlet taking him down. He's gonna have Overcharge taking him down. I would be happy to see uh, I actually get a survivability item rather than the Mask of Madness here. Also, Io it does have relatively short cooldowns, so Mask yeah. of Madness silence is dangerous. Drive gets his bounty room. Oh, snatch away from him, from him. But an Arthrax also coming in as well. He's trying to get the relocate off, but definitely can't channel that with the clockwork. Stunning you with the battery assault. Halberd picked up on clockwork as well. Yeah, now they're working on these uh, shrines. Man, Io dying twice like that. Very, very sad. Still level 19. Very far from level 20. Mm, Io's just respawn, die, respawn, die, respawn, die. So close. Hopefully it's going to be enough. I was ready for this ownage, but they're already a lane down, about to, getting close to two lanes down. They're losing their shrines. They've already lost one. Roshan is up. Simon Fraser is in great position. Yeah. I love Blink Dagger on Tusk. I think that's so fun. It, it opens up so many opportunities for the hero just because of the how Snowball works. And, and I think Blink Dagger is such a fun item on Tusk. Anyone with like invincibility, right? Blink mm -hmm. Dagger is so fun with like Juggernaut, OD, Tusk. You can do so many like you know crazy plays with it. Obviously, I, um, Puck is a very mm -hmm. obvious one. And Hex is picked up on OD. That's insane. Uh, oh, he's Witch so Doctor fast. Has a BKB, actually. Witch Doctor is sick of 403 Smoke Cloud. Yeah. And Roshan finally being taken right now. Uh, Jive finally gets out of his grave. And let's see if he can finally hit that cover to level 20. Roshan is taking pretty fast right now with the Desolate from uh, Spectre doing a lot of damage. I don't think Washington can get there in time to stop it. No, definitely sure. not. Yeah, Simon Fraser has this. Yeah, they, it doesn't seem like Washington is even aware. 18k net worth lead and a heart radiance Aegis on the Spectre. I am not sure how they killed the Spectre twice. About to be level 25. Wisp still doesn't have his level 20. I need to see it. Don't end the game. I swear. If Simon Fraser ends this game before we get to see the level 20 Wisp Medusa. <laughs> yeah. I need to take some deep breaths here. I so, can't. I can't. How do you think they deal with the Spectre? Uh, it's back, they definitely Wisp has to team up with Medusa. Definitely, mm. Wisp should be level twenty by this point, but unfortunately, Wisp isn't. However, the level fifteen talent te Tether Grant Scepter bonus needs to be going on Medusa. Yeah. On top of that, Ravages. We've seen huge Ravages. We need to see another one. Uh, I don't like. I think they have to engage a fight disengage and re-engage because they have to get rid of witch doctors bkb and alt and it looks like we're about to have a fight here <laughs> there was the uh hurricane pike used on to the ricky he used the tricks of trade to dodge those uh, hits he actually might have been okay not uh using that um but he, he didn't know there was a sentry on top of him if there was a sentry he definitely could have taken a lot of damage and given a lot of intelligence over to OG. yeah exactly he's also dodging the intelligence which is a big part of it yeah I wouldn't be surprised to see Clockwork actually initiate this fight. Oh, and yeah, that was going to He doesn't have a choice of trade or invisibility to take that away from him. That's going to be 16 intelligence over onto OD. That's where just using the heart to uh, good effect there, just harassing it down the tower, regen back up with heart, and go back in. Rinse and repeat. Drive still halfway to level 20. I need it. I oh, there is the hex coming out of Medusa. Oh, Carthesis jumps in with the blink. That's where, oh my god, dude, you're getting really aggressive. Jive going down again. That's where you might want to get out here. The guy is graved, buddy. Uh oh, yeah, that, that's that's uh, overextension. This exactly what they need. Um, He mantas off the slow. He Can he get out? Actually, just walks right out. He gets slowed by the diffusal oh, blade. No. And, oh, there's also the imprisonment as well. His heart is ticking while he's in the imprisonment. So he gets out very healthy. Jumps on to Meme Tech. 
But he's taking a lot of damage. He goes on to Tyrant. He knows what Grave is. Oh, actually, Grave is. Oh, it's an AoE. Grave from the Scepter. First time seeing that there's a Ravage coming out. And also a great ulti from the Medusa catching a lot of them. There is a huge hammer being dropped. And four people go down immediately. Two buybacks over on the side of uh, Washington right now. He's no level 20 in IO still. Hello. Oh. This is going to be a dieback on the Medusa. No! He's going to take him down. The Iowa's trying to save him, but it's not going to be enough. Ricky, there's two diebacks over the side of Washington. Jive now getting He's chased into alive. the fountain. Oh, that's what He's feeling confident. Oh my god, the dispersion and the radiance is too to much. Train. Not Twist even level 20. Twisted didn't even get to level 20. Come on! <laughs> well, OD was a very smart man at the end of that fight. Um, I'm, I'm sad? let down. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't. What? How do you describe this? This is like you go to work, and then you think it's time to go home, and then someone's like, "Oh, you have to stay an extra two hours." Like <laughs> this is. This is like you you go it's Christmas day and you open up a present and it's something you really want and then you realize it had someone else's name on the present. Like Wisp didn't even get level 20. Yeah. Very sad. I'm I mean Simon Fraser earned it. Their laning is insane. The Spectre scared me. He got a very fast radiance. So I think yep. it was about 18 and that's on top yep. of an Aquila and Boots. Uh, Artorix is my favorite player of the whole series. I gotta say right now, he just fights everyone. He is in this game to fight people. I love that. Yeah, very Four, ballsy. World 3 played insane game 1 and 2, and I just felt like Ricky wasn't quite... Nade, this game, I, I see, he knew what he was doing on Ricky too, but this just wasn't the game for him. I don't even know, he finishes Defusal right at the end of the game, but like, he finishes Defusal when there was a Radiance Heart Spectre. Like, Diffusal is a huge power spike for Ricky, but yep. not in that scenario. Where Ricky, I bet you Ricky would kill himself to dispersion before he would kill Spectre. Spectre just let him yeah. hit him with well, radiance. That definitely burn. makes sense. Um, Tide Hunter just became a ravage. We did get to see an AOE uh, Dazzle. <laughs> Dazzle Shallowgrave was sick, but that that was Simon Fraser's game. I almost feel like I focused too much on level 20 Wisp. I wanted it so bad. I, I mean, we all did. Attention. I, I needed it, and I yeah. still haven't seen it. Now I know it exists, and I still haven't seen it. <laughs> it's, it's a meme, uh, and we're promised a meme, but we didn't get to see it. Oh. CSL Finals. It yeah. better be there. Yeah, so sad. Um, I mean, but you were, you, at the start, you were talking about how Washington's coming in here very strong, and uh, it was a big question. As if, as if you had what it takes, we will take it, and there was the upset. There was the upset that, I mean, neither of us expected. I mean, we thought there was a chance, but um, Washington was looking so strong. So, yeah. looking very great. exciting. Well, I love the, the Wisp play mid, where even if it didn't kill OD, which it did the first time, it took away over 60% of his HP, so OD has to leave lane, because he knows that, what's that, like an 18-second cooldown or whatever on Spirits? A Wisp can just do it again, over and over and over again. Ricky shows up, takes the ward, OD can't go to lane against that. Uh, Simon Fraser was under so much pressure, and just like how Washington did in Game 1, Simon Fraser in Game 3 had a, had a rough start, but they kept their chins up, and they just farmed away, played the game smart, except for an insane Spectre overextension at the end, which actually bought his team enough time to take the base. Spectre didn't even die for that. I don't know. Simon, Simon Fraser earned it. I don't yeah, think anyone no, can take that away from him. That wasn't a fluke at all. Simon Fraser played great Dota, and I would, especially their laning phase. I think, I think they're insanely strong laners. They know what they're doing in their laning phase, and I don't think a lot of other players or other teams can say... They understand the lighting phase as well as Simon Fraser yeah. is. Alright, so that's going to wrap up our Division 2 Ooh, spotlight for this week. Yeah, I mean, we got to see some some great plays from Division 2. I mean, also a lot of teams that we definitely see some potential of maybe seeing Division 1 next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely and, a lot of these... Well, I want to see Wisp level 20 first before <laughs> we talk about upping the divisions. Don't ever pull that again. Level yeah, I mean, that's also a thing, right? I mean, we don't see that kind of, like, crazy strats in Division 1, so the kind of charm that comes out of these kind of Division 2 games are, like, the in interesting strategies that are a little bit offbeat are so fun to watch. Mm -hmm. So if we you guys... We saw Huskar get banned twice. We didn't see Huskar either. Yeah. 
Yep, I mean, the Huskar was respect banned every single time, so they must have some kind of record with Huskar, right? I want to see it. So I, want, guys... I won't believe it till I see it. <laughs> so if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, you can see my Twitter handle right there, at JTGolgiApp. And over on Carlton, my partner's side over there under his name is right there. Carlton, I believe the first O is supposed to be a zero. We can't really tell, but... Carlton, T-0-N, the second O, actually. The second O, my bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you guys are interested, actually, Wiv and I are going to be uh, covering some open qualifiers for uh, Epicenter XL coming up this Ooh, weekend. Oh, that sounds exciting. So if you guys want to tune into that, that's going to be on the Twitch channel, Dota Brew, D-O-T-A-B-R-E-W. And I'll of definitely course, be checking that out. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I expect to see you there then. Perfect. So I expect to see level 20 West. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, it's op open qualifiers. Anything can happen. <laughs> so if you guys want to join us on Discord, type exclamation mark Discord in the chat, and we'll link you right to that. And on the Twitter for CS Star League, you can follow us on C Star League. And over on Collegiate Dota as well, if you want just Collegiate News, Collegiate Dota News and not other, you know, League or any other of those games oh. that are inferior to Dota. <laughs> and, Every game that isn't Dota. Yep. And on Facebook as well, on C Star League. And of course, as always, nothing more gratitude towards Twitch, from PAX East to West, and many more events. The CSL won't be what it is today without the help and support from them. And they are definitely better than Facebook streaming. So be on the lookout <laughs> for cool opportunities getting involved with Twitch in the near future and show some support on twitter.com slash twitch and facebook.com slash twitch. Thank you so much, Twitch. And thank all right. you all for tuning in. Yeah, um, we'll be back 4 p.m. on Tuesday with Division 1 games yet again. See you guys. Number one. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.